Come on, everybody, get set, let's go. It's the next episode. It's the Premium Pete Show. News, interviews, all of the info. Listen up, it's the Premium Pete Show. If you want to scoop in the low, down low, listen to the show, cause milk said so. Fuck what you heard, better act like you know. Miss Listen knows. It's the Premium Pete Miss Show. Miss Listen knows. Is dropping a mixtape soon yes. called Shit Must Be Easy, Volume 1. It'll be sold at all your local bodegas. It will actually... <laughs> all the tables in Harlem. You, let me tell you something. You actually will be able to get a free copy with a quart of almond milk. You understand? <laughs> so, listen. Internets, listen. Shit must... Be, you, you've been hearing the original bars, okay? And they've been coming, you know? Uh, no pause needed? No. Okay, okay. No. Shit Must Be Easy, Volume 1 by Miss Listen Knows. Uh, I'm going to be executive producing the uh, album. You know, okay. I got an ear for some beats for her. Okay. okay. <laughs> Miss Listen Knows, hit him with some more bars. I'm making these power moves. You making these sour moves. Uh. Your fame only 15 minutes. My 24 hours, boo. 365 days a week. That decaf grind is weak. Cheer. It conditions tracks. Never bring heat. I don't do pedicures. Never feel defeat. Y'all hoes are relevant. I don't give a fuck like I'm celibate. Claim you buy, you ain't selling shit. Fly but your propeller's bent. We don't believe you. You need more evidence. You ain't looking right. You need a celibate. <laughs> there you go. Listen. Hey, th- th- listen. That's that's just a sneak peek of uh, the mixtape coming out by Miss Listen Knows called Shit Must Be Easy Volume, volume one. 1. And listen, I'm fucking with it. I'm fucking with these bars. Anyway, internets, welcome back to another episode of the Premium P Show. So happy. Uh, another week. Our uh, brother to the show, Dallas Penn, in the fucking building. Ow. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. Hey, Miss Lisa, how you doing? I'm doing good. You got your Met stuff on. I'm, I'm hyped. I'm feeling extra queenie because you repping Queens. I, that's where I come I from. I got my... My Nubian braids in, feeling like a goddess. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We finally got a female in here, so the estrogen is extra high. Yeah, but you don't got no, you don't got no shea butter, you know. Uh, no, because she comes with melanin, so she's good. Anyway, listen, you know, we, I want to get right into it because I'm excited to have her here. You know, internets. What I want to let you know about Dr. Maya Pettifit is one thing. Wait, is how that, you say? Because I was saying Petty for it, Al. Because I'm Petty. Well, stop being too. Petty McGetty, Teddy Pendergrass. <laughs> relax over there. What I want to say is this: for the internet that may know of her, first of all, shouts to Chris Morrow because Chris Morrow brought you um, on to the uh, to the Combat Jack Show years ago when you did an episode with us, and really, I thought it was groundbreaking. You know, um, I don't really go see therapists, even Dallas, like, you know, even Combat at the time. And you came in there, and and you really got us to open up, and you really got us to talk about stuff. And, you know, um, so that's where you, you, you know, you stem from, meaning like where you came up on the Internet, because you really were like, I'm not on the Internet. But now a lot of Internet's know you because you, you went on tax, you went on uh, uh, fan bros, you've been on, you know, uh, uh, the combat. And, um, you know, like, so, th- you know, you, you've been doing some podcast and I really wanted to have you just because, like, you know, years ago when we did that, I was like, yo, that shit was beautiful because you gave me a chance to feel comfortable to open up. And therapy is so important, and more importantly, you know, it's it, it's something that needs to be discussed. And also, I told you, like I said before, and we're going to get into it, is I wanted to know a little bit about Dr. Maya Pettifit. Because people have you come on, and you interrogate their ass, <laughs> and they never get the chance to know about, you know, a therapist's mind. You know, like Tony Soprano seen uh, his doctor, you know, and, you know, we, we found out about her, and she had a therapist, so we'll find out about you. But anyway, internets, with great welcome Dr. Maya Pettifit to the show. Thank you, thank you. It's good to see you again. Oh, it is good to see you, and it's good to it, it's good to, you know, um, have uh, Dallas here because uh, the last time, you know, he he uh, was a little bit uh, crazy with you. I mean, yes, he was. The funniest thing I'm going to tell you something. Yeah, when, when, when I come here regularly, and if it's just me, uh, you, Pete, and Miss Lissa, I get a little bit of therapy with Miss Lissa. Mm-hmm. You know, she <laughs> listens to me. She kind of she engages with me. Yes, for real. So so now I'm double. I got two fine therapists yes, right now. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes. one professional, one, you know, de facto. So I'm really, I need to take my shirt off. Yeah. And do, just, do and relax. Fair. And don't relax. Like, and get comfortable. You got breasts. Don't, don't, yeah. Yes, I do have I do have, I do have breasts. I do have breasts. I do have breasts. I'll be honest with you, man. I don't really want to see your titty meat. So so if you could do me a I didn't, favor. I didn't, say, I didn't say get naked. I mean, just to take my shirt like off. Like a tank top or something? I've, there's another. I have another shirt. I have a shirt under the shirt. Under the shirt. And I didn't say get naked. 
I, I don't want to expose my I titty meats. I thought that naked was like a metaphor for when he's going to like reveal himself mm. and just be, you know, <laughs> he's not going to hold anything you, back. He's going to strip down. You see yes. how Miss Lissa is? Miss Lissa is so fantastic. It doesn't have to be, you know. Thank you, Miss Lissa. Yes, exactly. I got you. Doc, exactly. Doc, there's exactly. some crazy people here. Right off the bat, Doc, um, I was telling you uh, before we went on air at, um, you know, when I was young, I was in a program. Um, you know, um, it was like a drug program. It was an alternative to street crime. It was Task. Called, task. And, um, you know, I learned a lot in there. I did well in there, and I did so well, they offered me a job. Hmm. Uh, they wanted me to be a counselor. Um, I was going to go for my um, ASAT. Uh, KSAC. K- okay. It's called a JED. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck that is. <laughs> but anyway, you know, uh, at the time, and I told people about this, I also was work. my father, uh, I, I was mingling with some of the people that he was around in the city, in the Wall Street area. They they uh, uh, were fond of me, and they offered me a job for like triple the amount because it was so cheap. So the point I'm trying to make is therapy, therapist, um, you know, aftercare, all that shit always been close to my heart because those people don't get paid. Not saying you don't, but I'm saying most of those people, a lot of that job is from their heart mm-hmm. yeah. because it's not humongous money, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I mean, there's councils now making very low money, uh, you know, um, it's not the biggest field. I wish they would get more money. They do. They do? They do if you have the right credentials. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So when you have a bachelor's or a master's degree, you don't make that much money. And that's why it's always advisable that you get a doctorate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But a you got to be like in... You got to be... PhD. It's the only internationally recognized degree. So I can go anywhere yeah. mm. and teach. You got to talk and that talk. Medical mm. doctors can't do the same. And how many years is that? Depends on the person. I... Um, I uh, majored in English literature in undergrad, so I didn't have any psychology courses. So then mm. I had to go get my master's and then my PhD, so it took me around nine years. God damn. So you must still be paying off student loans. Oh, my God. Mm. <laughs> I don't have a house because I have student loans. Really? Mm. Luckily, you was born with bundles or else you would be bankrupt. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah, because you good. You got that just add water, add curly when wet. You good. You don't have to buy no hair. That. So that takes away some of the bills. Do you have an Obama phone? <laughs> What's an Obama phone? You know the, the little phone. No, she don't have no Obama you know, phone. Okay, I'm just trying to cut some corners so she can save some money. <laughs> no, nah, it's under control. I mean, I'm doing quite well. I wear many hats. I work at the DOC. I uh, teach. Department of Corrections. Correction. Mm-hmm. Everyone says corrections. It's yeah, correction. I, I feel like I, mm-hmm. I. I mean, I wore an outfit in the back and fucking said <laughs> DOC. Right, right, right. So, you know what I mean? I like, trust me. I it know. should be corrections though. Yeah. Because why? Because there's more than one thing that needs to be corrected. <laughs> <laughs> How many people end up in jail just for one thing? Like you got to jail. You did several things right. to fuck up. So you need more than one correction. <laughs> And how come it's called a corrections officer, right? Or it's called correction correction officer. Oh yeah, oh, we wow. see, I didn't even look at that. Mm. We just add stuff. People, we just, you know, people we listen. We, we we fly like that. But listen, Doc, in jail, particularly, you work there. No, I don't work in okay. jail. I don't. You I have don't. worked in in alternative stuff. Yes. Here's my thing. Yeah. Aftercare, I feel like in drug programs, and when people get out of jail, are gone. There's very few things that are aftercare that help people to stay out of it. You know. I, that's that, that's my opinion. Listen, when I came home from jail, there was very few stuff that I could do to adapt back into the world. You know, you're on parole, you're on probation, and then after that, it's like, see you. You yep. know, um, yep. to be honest with you, I feel like they do that because, you know. Well, they set you up for failure. Exactly. Mm-hmm. They put you in a red zone. You know, if you've committed a particular type of crime, you can only live in a particular place. It tends to be high crime, you know, high poverty. And you end up doing the same thing just to make ends meet. Mm-hmm. So the recidivism is very high, and that's what they kind of bank on because we do have privatized prisons now, right? Aren't we supposed to be making a profit? Sure. So that's what it's about. And now with the new, um, they're trying to repeal, you know, Obamacare. And what will happen is people who have, have coverage for, let's say, drug abuse and mental health issues, they're going to lose their health insurance, and they're going to be ass out, and we're going to have even more problems. Mm. Mm. Sorry it's, to bring the no, no, it's, down. It's, it's just sad, but 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 it's about to go down. But with your work in in the corrections, or your work in in, some I'm working of, with officers. I'm working with officers, really? not inmates. Yeah, they do need fucking help. <laughs> you I mean, have like no ID. Yeah. They do need help. You become like an inmate. So you are an inmate. Like, you're just an inmate that gets to go home. Yeah. and then has to come back the following day. Tell, Dallas always said, uh, I never forget. He said uh, that they have one foot in. And one foot out. Well, that, that that was a statement years ago about Rick Ross. 
not admitting that oh. he had been a correction <laughs> officer. Now, the, the thing is, all the correction officers I know that I've grown up around are hard body. Mm-hmm. They're, yeah. they're, they're, Official. They're, they're real dudes. And it's like, I mean, like, I would, I would not mess with them before I'd mess with a cop. If I'm even saying that right, the, yep. these yep. guys, yeah, these guys know what it's like to be in the prison, and and and, and they have to live through that life. So they, they they relate to other people, even when they're not in prison. Like like I gotta treat you. I gotta I gotta body you. It's it's absolutely true. right. I have to be savage towards you mm. because boom, when I'm on the clock, that's how I have to be. And it's and it's difficult for them to to turn that personality right. shift. off. Shift. Yep. But they also the thing is as scary is and and I, I got to tell this quick story because the sad thing was correction officers. It's like they have their own issues, and sometimes when they come to you know um you know I've seen correction officers from being away. Seen so many of them. Mm-hmm. I've also seen a correction officer when I was married to uh, um you know my my daughter's mother. Her sisters uh, married a correction officer. The dude, he was everything I thought they were. Meaning like, like he would be like, I'm fucking, I'm, I'm having a bad day. I'm going to go to work, break one of those ribs. Bre- wow. break, yeah, like he would want to take out the shit on the inmates. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like, listen, I've been away where people would tell me, you know, uh, uh, you're a fucking tax dollar. Shut the fuck up before I come in there and smack the shit out of you. Correction officers. Um, I used to ask, like when I was in the box, I used to ask, because uh, sometimes we would go like two, three days without showering. Mm-hmm. And if you weren't on the gate, meaning if you weren't dead at the door when you had to be, they would just pass you up. And if they felt like it, they would just pass you up. And I'd be like, sir, sir, I'm here. You're passing me up. I'm at the door. And they'd be like, shut the fuck up. And if I would say, but but I'm trying to take a shower, they would both come in and try to ruffle me up. Mm-hmm. Mm. And then, God forbid, if you put your hands up, boom, locked up, ticket, uh, assault an officer. So the point I'm trying to make is, you know, um, th- these correction officers... One they do need help. And do. that's who I see. Yeah. But w- listen, I want to just tell you this. One of the craziest stories I'll never forget. In Rikers, um, there was this correction officer. He always turned the other cheek. And it was cool because he let the house run the house. But it was bad because I'll never forget. They brought this kid in. And I think he had weed on him. And the word got out. Like, well, but, but, yo, you see this dude? Yeah, I think he got weed on him. So I already knew that the Bloods and a couple people, they were ready to just attack him. You understand? <laughs> so uh, he's sitting there, and I knew it was going down. Yo, they, they hemmed this dude up, dragged him on the floor, and, and then they dragged him in the cell. And once they dragged him in the cell, he's done. For weed? Yeah, yeah. just to, yeah. He had about like 30, uh, 30 pieces of weed on They wanted that weed. But the point I'm trying to make is, I look back at the correctional, if he turned his head. For a second, I, I, like maybe more for a second, I felt bad for that dude because they were dragging him in the fucking cell, and he's about to get washed. And, you know, I'm like, damn, like, you got to live with that conscious, you know what I mean? Like as a correction officer, but I don't know, whatever, man. But anyway, back to therapy, back to being a therapist. Okay, so at the Department of Correction, what I do is, you know, they negotiated a beautiful contract, meaning correction officers can be out on sick for an entire year and get full pay. Mm, mm. So sometimes they'll come in and they'll say that they have postpartum depression or they're anxious, they're having help, heart palpitations and panic disorder, and they'll try to milk the taxpayers, the system, yeah. yeah. So I have to determine whether or not they're being truthful. Yeah, by legitimate. Uh, cl- mm-hmm. yes, legitimate, and uh, they have a thing where if you are going to uh, see a therapist, I have to take your gun away. You're now no longer qualified to carry or possess a gun, mm. a weapon, and then I'll determine later on once they're healed whether or not they get it back. Mm-hmm. So right. I like the work that I do there. I, I don't, I don't, not the therapist. I just direct them to you know treatment outlets how is it like one um specific like are you working with anyone from rikers or is it like all over all officers different? all officers okay, okay. is there any New jail that's worse than the others like well i went on a tour they're all horrible right well, rikers is really bad and i've been like staying connected with the Khalif browder story and they're just saying that like how the officers in rikers are kind of like some of the worst because they have like something they call the system where they abuse the inmates um, who are kind of like more soft spoken mm-hmm. and the ones that are louder are allowed to do certain things and they'll let them prey on the other ones because they'll give them some of the money that they're extorting or they'll help them to bring drugs in and let certain things fly. Mm-hmm. So I feel like though, like, you know, there's like, I know they're all bad, but like certain, I guess, like higher profile prisons should have like, maybe mm-hmm. they need you even more. Well, and you know, there actually there's a movement to try and shut Rikers down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it calls Rikers, yeah. which will yeah. never happen. It'll never happen. It'll never happen because first of all, where the fuck are you gonna put all these people? 
Where? Yeah, I mean, they, they already closed. They already closed Spofford. Spofford. Did they come close it? It's been. Everyone's been transferred out, I believe, to Horizons, and um, and there's there's another facility. Edwin Gould, I think, somewhere in Brooklyn. Okay. Okay. Yeah. They, but but I I think just the facility of Spofford was just so run down. That it was... And that's what Rikers is like. I went on a tour there, and it's it's abysmal. Mm-hmm. It's abysmal. It's dirty. People don't smile. Yep. Paints falling off the walls, the, pitch, the pinch ceilings. Tip, yeah. Oh, it's, I tell you, it's I, spent, I spent I spent uh, enough time there, and 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 I I look back and I say, damn man, I don't even know how I I moved and survived through it. And I spent time in the box. I spent time in in, in 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 with the adolescents. I spent time in all over Rikers, man. And I'll tell you one thing, it was thorough, but um. It just showed me how many people need help, man. How many people need... Like, here's the thing, too. There's a lot of people, you know, uh, in there that um, have issues that they're, they're mad about. People mad at the world, you know, and, 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 and... Well, they have a reason to be, don't they? I mean, I'm I'm I, not a therapist. I've never gotten past the short stay. Okay. But that was enough for me. Yeah. That yeah. was enough. Just being in, in the bullpen, waiting for we, people to go see the off. That's right. They take your shoelaces from you, and everyone is in this this big gang room, and you got these two open toilets. So if you got to oh handle your business, you just got to go in front of everybody. That's in Rikers. Or I like couldn't the tombs? do that. This is this is it's like the tombs. Okay. It, it's a bullpen space that everyone gets kind of crowded in right before you go to see the judge. Okay. And so I ended up in there, and the beauty of it was that with all these people that are in there, I'm in there. So it's like, I'm looking at these people and I'm like, oh, I'm here with the dregs. But no, I'm one of the dregs. Huh. I'm in here. Like right. this guy who's laying on the floor with his head on the floor, inches from the toilet. And like pee splatters mm. is falling on his face. I'm I'm him. I'm not him, but I'm here with him. Let me ask something. Did are. you take a shit in the open like that? No, no, no. I, I clenched. I, I, <laughs> I locked my I shit up. I, I locked and, and the key to lock your shit up too. Turtle, turtle was. Tur- no, turtle no, no, was turtle, no, turtle, no turtle. I locked my shit up. I locked my shit up from the moment they put the cuffs on me. Exactly. I know what you I mean. I did a whole system tight lockdown. Ass, I did ass. a whole yeah, system yeah, yeah. lockdown. Yeah, yeah. And then when they come through with the food, you did not. Only I'm having is water. Yes. Right. They came through with the brand cereal and the two percent milk. Yes, yes, yes. Deny that. Yeah. I and told, the bologna sandwich. I told, I told little man that was next to me. I told him don't eat that. Homeboy that ate that. Man, listen, he was banging on it. He was like, yo, CO, CO, I got to take me to the bathroom. I got to go to the bathroom. CO put a little tiny little roll of toilet paper through the gate mm. and was like, yeah, there you go right there. And he was like, no, nah, I can't go. I can't go in front of everybody. He had to go in front of everybody. That mm. brand, that brand, serving that 2% milk, got him. Yeah. Yeah. Got him. And the milk ain't cold. It's warm. I lock my shit up. Oh, yeah, like, please. It's crazy. Doc, let me ask you something. Yes. Um, you know, with people, being that, you, you know, you see the prisons and, and, and how tough it is and, and especially had you know the leaders you know supposedly like the correction officers going mm-hmm. through their own shit even someone like me you know being in the box I spent the, uh, a minute in the box uh, and I, I, I think that box led to a lot of depression for me yes I've been home um, 12 years I think about 12 years but I still there's many things I feel depressed about but that box for some reason I feel like it affected me but I'm chugging it up and moving on. But sometimes I think about it, I'm like, then I really think it did something to me. What? Just made me feel down. Like when I was in there, you know, I spoke about this. So what you need to be asking, Pete, or Doc, do you have tools for me when, I'm, when I just have a gray day? Are, are, there, are there coping tools that, that you could give someone for when there's a gray day? It depends what the the trigger for the gray day is. I mean, are you able to pinpoint? Are you having a flashback about being in the box? Or is it a general malaise? Because quite frankly, there's nothing. Happiness doesn't exist. It's Mm. fleeting. It's Mm. about contentment. And some days, maybe you're having existential angst. I don't know where I am. I don't know. You hey, know. What'd you say? Existential? Do you know <laughs> where you're going to? You got you got like eczema. Life is dry. Life is Doc, we're gonna we're gonna get to you, but uh, if we're, if we're gonna stay on this topic, I want to get to know a Sorry. little bit more about the doc. So, no, we need no, to no, know what? No, but hold on. We're gonna, <laughs> they, he, we, now he's nervous, yeah, girl. Yeah, you yeah, got yeah, He's yeah, deflecting. Yeah, yeah. He's no, deflecting. we're gonna get to you, but we're gonna get to you. But I want to. I'll stay on this. The problem is the box for me was a very dark time in my life and it really affected me in a sense of I was so depressed in there literally I was getting mail from my daughter my niece I spoke about it before bawling out crying very emotional 
very sad, very uh, defeated. You know, uh, Doc, I've been through, uh, and you know this, I spoke, I've been through so many ups and downs in my life. Mm. Um, was I feel like I'm a professional at brushing myself off, getting back up, and doing better. Like, I, I, I would impress people all the time, like, damn, people down. And then next thing you know, I come back and reinvent myself. Or, 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 But I'm just telling you, as you get older, it gets harder to do. It gets more, you know, you feel more defeated. You know, um... I always say I feel more de- more defeated. Well, yeah, I feel more defeated. But that box, you know, being in there for so long, you know, I even thought, and you know, I spoke about this, and and shouts to my man Azim. They Huffington Post just did an article on me, um, oh, really? like a like a feature. Congratulations! And, yeah, thank you. And and I wrote, and and when he was telling me, I I was explaining to him. I never told anyone this before, that even though I would have never, while I was in that box, it was so long. You went gay. No. No, I oh, didn't. Okay. I did. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, I didn't want to crush your dreams. <laughs> I literally, I, 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 I thought about how life would be not being here. I was, was going to say without your presence. Yeah, and 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 I sometimes hope it was would end mm-hmm. when I went to sleep. You know, because I just got tired of. I, I you have to understand. I'm 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 a fast talking, uh, you know, non patient Italian fuckhead. Uh, that was in there, like, I, I had no patience to stay in that fucking room anymore. And it was dark, and it was cold, and it was lonely, and, and I spent some long time, I felt like, what is it doing for me? You know, it made me feel, like, uh, depressed. Like I told you, I was emotional. I was an emotional wreck in there, and, and, and still to this day, like, some days I wake up, and there's other things that bother me, but I can never pinpoint, and I had this conversation with so many people because I try to help other people who are depressed. Mm-hmm. How crazy is that? I haven't even helped myself. I help other people. But the point I'm making is I cannot pinpoint why I'm depressed. Sometimes I just wake up and I'm depressed. Mm. Did you get issues like being alone because you were in the box so long by yourself? I mean, be honest with you, I feel like that helped me because I never wanted to be alone. And that forced me to be alone. I always like to be mm. with somebody. I always like to enjoy myself, which I always tell people well, back in the day when I was playing arcades, if my man didn't have money, I'd be like, yo, don't worry about it. I got five hours. We could split this. Because I didn't want to go into com- – uh, it ain't fun if the homies can't have none. That's how, <laughs> that's how I felt. Well, a little bit of codependency maybe. Mm-hmm. That too. Totally. That too. And, you know, um, so, you know, shit, we get right to it. But I, I, I really feel like – I still go through that. There's times, I mean, I give you more examples and then you can figure out, but even like growing up with my daughter, not being here for all the, you know, not being, missing out on some key time, Mm -hmm. you know, when she was young, now she's going to be 17. But here's the thing, growing up, being a father to her, being a weekend dad, being more than a weekend dad, I was always able, I think I had that shit down pack, I thought. Right. I would help people because that's my, I want to do that. I want to help other people. I want to help other parents, people who are going through shit, single dads, separated dads. And I thought I had it down pat. Once she turned into about 13, 14, man, it's been a roller coaster ride. So the point I'm trying to make is not being able to be there for my daughter because I don't live there and I can't control every single moment. And she's a teenager who's rebellious on certain things mm-hmm. and it gets tough and it's a roller coaster ride with no seatbelt. That makes me depressed. You understand? Like, meaning, like, you could give your kid all the tools in the world, and, you know, you, you're annoying. You understand? Like, I, you know, you, you understand? Yeah, but it sounds to me like you're trying to control certain things that are outside of your control. W- would, well, they, uh, would these uh, things be inside his control even if he was, uh, no, even if she no, lived with him? No, that's, that's my point. What she's doing is she's becoming an adult. What she's doing is within the normative range. Yeah. All teenagers go through it. She's trying to figure herself out. And it's actually, she's testing her cognitive abilities by problem solving, by finding ways to go around you and her mom. Has she ever said anything to you? Has she said, I feel like you're not there for me in this present time she only uses that when she's doing something bad like for instance i found out that she cut school and i and then and then um i caught her and 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 and, uh, you know uh, approached her about it and then she was like i'll go stay with your new family and leave me alone you know like she only Mm. points out stuff when she when when it when it's convenient for her right but there might be a hint of truth in that yeah i mean it could be and 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 you know the you know, that's 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 all right. But let's yeah. get back to your depression. Yeah. It sounds to me like when you wake up in the morning and you could uh, bathe in the glory of the day, 
you don't feel like you're deserving of it because you put yourself back in the box. Wait, you mean... Mm. Break that down for me. Brand new day. You wake up beside your your partner, your wife. Mm -hmm. Your son is sleeping next to you. He's all happy. Baby mother. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. The mo- his partner. My, his pa- romani- my, my lady. My your lady. romantic partner. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. Okay. Now, now, now Dallas <laughs> being petty for it. No, no, I'm just saying par- <laughs> partner describes like 50, 50, right? Partner should be... And he- Oh no! I guess partner could be thirty. I thought 70. she was correcting it because partner meant Al. <laughs> no, <laughs> back in that box. You know, Dallas is a prime example, Doc. You know what Dallas? Is a, you know, Dallas is a prime example what? of. He's been. He was with his lady for like fucking thirteen, fourteen years, and then all of a sudden he got married. Now he's judging everybody else. You know what I mean? Like, give me some time. I'm only five years in. Not you know? five. And Ooh, well, shit, or get off the pot. I'm sure. That's, but we'll listen, we'll talk that yeah. we're we're deflecting. Yeah. So. What I mean is you wake up in the morning, the sun is shining, you have your lady next to you, snuggling, warm. You have your baby next to you, snuggling, warm. You spoke to your daughter the night before, she's completely content. Mm -hmm. You wake up and you're unable to appreciate that moment because you are scared because that's not as predictable as the box. Mm. Word. So you put yourself back into the box because in some ways that box is safer and more predictable and controllable than what you have around you, which may be part of the reason why you have commitment issues, if that's something that you have with your partner. But we digress. Yeah. What do you think about that? No, I mean... Uh, I like that. That was dope. I think you hit, you said you a carpenter or a, a, <laughs> or a doctor because you hit that nail on the head. I just, I'm a carpenter. <laughs> I mean, you know, truthfully told, you know, I think that, um, you know, you, I'm still just. You're a fast talker. Yeah. You're always thinking. You're always moving, which is a means for. What is the word that I'm looking for? Staving off depression. You haven't dealt with it. This is in you but you know you can go real fast real fast and then you just collapse because it's exhausting you're not being present with your feelings and so that's why you're able to do all the things that you do because you're not in touch with it Mm. yeah and i feel like uh, i'm trying to make up for all the failures i've done to myself to myself not only to my family but to myself like i feel like i'm always trying to make up be, like, I'll give you example. You don't fail. We are who we are. Let me tell you this. What you're lacking is self-compassion. You have a lot of compassion for other people. You're always trying to help other people out. What about being kind and gentle with yourself? You feel guilty for what you've done? You're here now. We cannot not undo that's, the past. That's, Doc, that's one of the biggest problems I have. And I mean that. Um, I don't like... I love loving people. I don't like people to love me. Mm. I'll give you an example. Even a, a recent episode, we had uh, my friend Chasing Cash on, and he was talking a lot, you know, a, a very well of me. And I felt like that he talked enough well of me that I cut him off just to go to the next thing we talk about because I, 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 I don't know what it is. Like, don't get me wrong. I love the spotlight. I love mm-hmm. to create. But I love to love people. I love to do things for other people, even before doing them for myself sometimes. I don't know what that is. Like, I always tell people, even like uh, when I met my lady, um, it was my birthday. And I come home and there's like 40 candles all around the house leading up to the steps. And she comes down and she's like, hey. And I'm like, what are you doing? You got so many candles here. You're going to burn the house down. Instead of me Mm. wanting to take that appreciation of me, I kind of deflect and I'm like, like, I'll just love you. Don't worry about loving me. Because mm. you don't feel lovable. Mm. I don't know what it is. I don't know. I, I'm you know, telling you what it is. And that's part of the reason where some days, like, you know, I feel... You're like, damn, do I deserve all of this? Yeah. You know, and, and it's hard. Like, I was telling you, too. Like even That was it. That was... Yeah. Honestly, that was it. That was it. We could almost not talk to you anymore this show. And, and now, <laughs> right now, now we get right, yeah. Yeah. Now we <laughs> get right to Miss Lissa that's, because... That was it right there. That is that's your issue. Wait, wait, who? No, no, no. Now, now, it's now who? it's your turn. Now I it's your we turn. We was gonna get to know the doctor. No, we were we're gonna we get will. To, we, we won't get to the doctor. Probably, but no, but, but, but we won't get to the doctor. But now we also have we also have the co-host of the Premium Pete Show, Miss Lissa, uh, incredibly witty. She. I is, liked your rhyme. I couldn't do oh, that. No, 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 no. I like the. Ladies. She is the wit of the show. While while Pete is the engine and the drive and the soul, 
this is the the intelligence and the wit <laughs> and and the snark right here. But um, Doc, please, Miss Lisa knows, help her out. Well, well, I don't even know how to do this. <laughs> well, what's going on with you? I don't know. What's going on, guys? Well, well, okay. Um, if if you don't mind, uh, again, incredibly intelligent, very witty. Um, just looking to to push some buttons to take her her act, her brand uh-huh. to another to the next level. Okay. And and I feel like what she needs is is a is just a little bit of coaching, a little bit of confidence. And and maybe somebody to just get in her ear and tell her that she is good enough, she's smart enough, and and she can do it. And she's nice and people like her. You're going to mm-hmm. make me cry. That's why I don't talk to people. Tell I mean, I'm private. Um, can, you, can you tell me how old you are? No, girl, I'm right on this paper. <laughs> right on I'm the paper. Look, I'll tell you my age. If she tells you, you're just telling her. <laughs> I'll tell her. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm really, I'm private, so I'm a big mouth, and I am very boisterous, but in my normal day-to-day life, I'm very private. When I'm home, I don't really like lights. I don't really watch television. But in public, I'm really like, mm-hmm. and I am like that, and I do like to, like, I do enjoy making people laugh, but I'm really like, it's like a defense mechanism. I feel like, you know, people think you're giving them everything, but really you're giving them absolutely nothing. Nothing, absolutely. You're banging on pots, mm-hmm. and you're making noise, and you're getting there. You're keeping their attention, but you've given them nothing. You actually kept them at the door, <laughs> just mm-hmm. like, oh, my God, it's so fun. But they never go in your house, and that's mm-hmm. that's basically me. You know, Doc, before you get into it, I do feel like uh, Miss Lissa is someone who, and this is my opinion, hasn't let someone love her either. Um, I feel like she is like one of those people that think someone's going to run the okie doke on her. <laughs> mm. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. meaning like, 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 you know, um, without giving, not knowing that not everyone's the same. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, um, and I feel like she needs love and, you know, needs someone to love her, but she has to allow that. Um, I, I, that's what I believe. I feel like, you know, she keeps on probably, I mean, you tell me, but I feel like she keeps on coming up. I don't want to say short, but I feel like she keeps on finding herself in the same situation as far as being it for love mm-hmm. because she is very strong minded. She's very, very, uh, um, a very strong minded woman, very independent woman, very, I don't need you, but you know, but I'm I, not. Yeah. And, I'm not. And I don't want you to be 50 years old and be alone. I'm not like that though. I feel like people, they put me in that box. Like I am a strong woman. And I am. I feel like most people buckle down in circumstance, or they allow things to give them like a defeatist attitude. My whole life, I've been fighting adversity, and I just been making things happen. And I just, you know, like people do disappoint me, and I, I feel like that hasn't like completely hardened my heart. Like I still love. Like I said, I, I thrive off of making people happy and making helping people. Like I like to do that. But then I do feel like. Nine out of ten times, people end up shitting on me, and I'm like, damn, should I have done that? But it's in my personality to keep doing it, so mm-hmm. it hasn't hardened my heart, but it has made me create a kind of a wall where I am guarded. So I'm helping, I still help, but I, I don't allow people into me and what's going on. I'm, I, I don't, and I do want to be loved, but I also feel like, like I said, I've been fighting adversity. So What I, do you mean, specify? Like, my mom and my dad were, were both on drugs growing up, so... So who took care of you? Me. And, like, if, randoms. Like No, no, no. My foster mom would, care, kinship no, foster care at home? No, like, black families. Like, so, my, my family's from Harlem, and my mother and my father grew up in the same project, so mm-hmm. my grandmothers were a building apart. So my mom might leave me at this grandmother's house, or she might leave me with this grandma, or my mom has eight siblings. So, I mean, I was always with a family member, but I was really with my mom. Are you only child? I feel like it. I mean, I have a brother, but he's five years older than I am. and he's Same a, mother or father? Yeah. Uh-huh. And for him, he always wanted a brother, and I feel like he's held that against me my whole life. Like, he's always said, well, I wanted a brother. Like, even to this day, he'll let you know that he wanted a brother. And I'm like, well, I didn't choose my gender. So growing up, I turned into a tomboy because I wanted to, like, appease him. 
Hmm. And and like, you know, like him being five years older than I am, he had a different growing like he had first of all, he had both of my parents for at least five years before they split. Like they split when we were when I was seven. So he was twelve. But so he had them for five years before I was even born. Were they so, sober then? With him? I don't I wanna say my dad was a little more together, like it was he was like more of the seller and then at a certain point he started trying his own product. So mm-hmm. those five years I feel like he did have it together way more. So my brother had a stable mother and father, then here I come. Now he has a little sister, so he always felt like I got treated better. And then the family broke up, so I feel like he kind of like attributed that kind of to me showing up, I kind of feel like. So with him t- always telling me that he hated me mm-hmm. and my mom not showing up and my dad kind of chasing my mom, I just kind of got like mixed in. And I feel like I've always been like, hey, hey, me, I'm right here. But I've never really like stopped that from, make, like I've always just been well-read. My mom would like let me stay home from school. Like I would go two weeks missing school. But I always love reading books and I've always been very observant and I've always been in grown folks' conversations. So I've always had like a different like vernacular. Like, I could hold a conversation and I'm witty because I was around grown-ups when I was like a kid. Mm-hmm. Like my aunt is one of the funniest people I've known. I always used to, used to be around her because she would help me like find my mom. Like I remember being seven years old and calling people to find my mom. So I had the mom, my mom. So I've always been more mature. And because I've never been like the helpless little deer, people like this think I'm a robot. So I just keep it going. Like I don't stop and be like, hey guys, I'm I want to cry or I need a hug. Like Because you were a parentified child. Yeah. So So you became an adult and even though inside you are asking for other people to help you and to hug you, right. the way in which you present is quite different. Right. So So that's the hey, I'm here. But don't come too not near. Not too much now. Because you will see how I'll fragile I, I really am. Yeah. So when's the last time you cried, Miss Lisa? Yesterday. Really? I cry all the time. Like, I am a crier. I just don't cry in front of people. Ever? Rarely. Like, people that, like, it takes something. Like, maybe, like, her. For what reason were you crying yesterday? Um, I get just really, like, caught up in, like, circumstance. Like, you're going to make me cry now. I'm not going to make you do anything. Let your tears flow. There's no I reason. I don't want to, to. Look, all the people in this room love you. And we're not judging you for seeing your tears. If you hold it in, you'll only explode later down the line. Allow yourself to be vulnerable. And somebody get her some tissues, please. And we do love you. Mm -hmm. I mean, like... Breathe, breathe, breathe. Breathe. I'm very much, like, content with, like, everything that's happening in my life. And just, like, I do understand that I am blessed, like... I could easily be, like, a prostitute or a crackhead or, like, you know, like, a drug addict or, you know, like, everybody doesn't wake up and do the, like, the things that they want to do. So sometimes I get overwhelmed with happiness, but then also I'm not rich. Like, and I tell people all the time, like, don't get, like, so caught up in what you see. Like, I'm still striving. So I still have moments where, like, just trying to find out, like, figure out a babysitter or paying this bill or Mm -hmm, the rent. Like, mm -hmm. I still have to make things happen. And right now I'm not working, and I was working before. So it was, like, the time shift did help me. Like, not having this job definitely helped me be more progressive. But at the end of the day, I'm still a starving artist, and I still have a daughter. And my How old mom is your daughter? Is, she's seven. And my mom, she got sick like right before Christmas. So I just feel like, you know, like if I was doing better and if I had more going no, on. No, 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 sweetie. Sweetie. That's how I just feel. I, I understand. You know, and it's just like, it just bothers me. And I just always just want to do more and just like help my family more. And you will. You will. It's, you know, I, I, I want to say this to the internet. Listening, you know, um, this, you know, tr- following your dreams and trying to turn them into reality is is a long process. Let me tell you something. Uh, when I realized that and how much of a a, a, a solid uh, soldier Miss Lissa is, is uh, we did an episode uh, two weeks ago, and uh, her daughter was here because she didn't have a babysitter. We ended about like midnight, and she's carrying her on her back sleeping. Like that's the type of shit that it takes to be successful. Mm-hmm. And, you know, let me tell you something, man. Even with the uh, uh, Combat Jack show, I mean, it may have not been much, but it took us like four years before we even seen a dime. You know, any one of us. 
you know, th- let me tell you something. That's one thing. I, I was going. I had pulled the parachute by then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'll be honest with you, man. It, it, that's one thing I hate about being a creative and being a freelancer. Because people see you making moves and mm-hmm. equate that to money. Let me tell you something. I've done and been around and built some of the most amazing relationships and done some amazing things. But I, too, still struggle monetarily. You know, um, I'm first time I've ever been with a girl who makes more money than me. You know, um, sometimes she's like, I got this. And I feel like less of a man. Like the kids I grew up with, they're like, how do you let her pay for that? I'm like, I got her on other, like, I'm, it's, it's evolving and learning to know that you're a team. And, and, and it's also, you know, like people don't see that. Like people see Miss Lissa knows, they see her around all these different things. She's doing this. Again, I want to say this, they equate you to being successful. Mm-hmm. Like you don't have no worries. Like you don't have a fucking bill. Like you know, and and it's tough. And the freelancing, you can make five hundred dollars one month, five thousand the next. So I wanted to just tell you in five dollars uh, the next, the next, yeah. So I just want to tell you that you know whatever it takes, you know, just don't ever stop yeah. because you to turn your dreams into reality doesn't take, you know, uh, Dallas used to say it takes ten night ten years to become an overnight success. And it's and we all struggle with that. And right. there's times where I cry and I wish I could do more for my kids. I wish I could do. And I, I guess what I'm just saying is you wake up every day, and 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 you keep chugging and you'll find the way. Yeah, I mean but, every day. I'm sorry. Every day I wake up and I mean I I I cry to myself because I try to, you know, in my own right, be in touch with my feelings. Like if something makes me laugh, I'm going to laugh. If somebody makes me mad, I'm going to curse their ass out. So I do try to cry, not in front of people, but I do try to do that just to balance out my emotions Mm because I do know that I can get, like, I have, like, panic attacks sometimes, and it just is what it is. But every day I wake up and I tell myself that today I'm going to have that breakthrough. Like, I'm really big on just, like, the energy that you put into the universe and the things that you say, like, manifesting. So I, I do like try to maintain a positive mindset and sometimes I'm just faking it until I make it like sometimes I'm just smiling through the pain but I feel like you know I, I read somewhere that that does make you happier because it releases endorphins absolutely so I do like I'm just like like I said it's a defense mechanism but you know it does help me cope and it does help me to keep pushing like every day I tell myself today I'm going to shake the right hand today I'm going to have my breakthrough and every day I do get one step closer but sometimes I have those down moments and I don't have that many friends why and not? I you don't I'm, trust people. I don't. Hashtag, That's our segment. I don't trust people. <laughs> That's one of our segments. You'll see later. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Trust you don't people. trust people because you couldn't depend on your your mother and your father. Right. How can you depend on anyone else? Right. Let's go back quickly to um, what you were saying about you know not being able to provide for your family and you are feeling badly about that. You are where you are. Right. Just the fact that you would want to help them is enough for them. Most people don't look back. Right. And it shows that you've healed somewhat, you know, with your mom leaving and using, abusing drugs and not being there for you. Yeah, I let that go. Like, I forgive her. I tell her that all the time. Like, I don't hold that against her. Okay, but you have to remember, she's the parent. Right. You're the daughter. She's going to get as good medical care as she can. You will tell her that you love her. And that's what it will be. We can't save everyone just because you weren't saved. Right. Mm. Gems. Gems by the doc. But you, why are you looking at me like Listen, that? Listen, doc. Why are you looking at me like that? Dallas knows he's next. Dallas knows he's next. And, and, and one, wait, thing I, one thing I want to... Go ahead. Uh, no, no, I'm, wait, wait, no I'm, I'm, I'm not even here. No, really. no, you're here because I want to say something. I'm, I do want to say something. As what? a friend, I want to say something. And I think... We spoke about this before, and and I'm not uh, I'm not making um, any assumptions, but I'm I, I'm am making somewhat of an assumption. It's almost like when you tell someone not to cut you off, but you're actually cutting them off. <laughs> <laughs> I did that so many times last episode. I'm sorry. How dare you? Not to cut you off. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, sometimes I feel like Dallas has expressed that he's. I don't know, like, uh, I don't want to say afraid of success, but, like... I remember that. You, the sabotage. Yeah, you, you, you... Let me tell you something. Dallas is... Just his vocabulary. Just his mindset. 
one of the most intelligent people I met. He's a sick fuck, but I love him for that also. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody who's comedic and funny, and I always love being a clown like that, and you know, like being jokey. But what a vocabulary, and what a mindset. But also has 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 done a lot. But also, I feel like is afraid of success, and I don't mean I I I'm just want to be honest. If I'm not a friend, I can't. I I have to say that because I would love for you to share that and then hear what the doc has to say but i want the best of success for you and i don't know what that is only you do <laughs> but i feel like you have done a lot you, you and, and and i'm proud of it and i want more for you i'm not afraid of success i i don't want success but because, you do think because that- when you do when you have success then people expect success so you're fa- afraid to fail or not meet others' expectations. No, no, I, I f people's expectations. Then your own. I'm cool. I'm good. So why do other people matter then? That they don't matter. I I could go sleep on a subway right now, and be good. And be good. Mm, you you smell. So you but you so what you're saying is that you are content with what it is that you have. You don't need any more or less. That's what I'm saying. And and people's expectations is like no, you should want more, you should want, uh, you should want greater things, and I don't because once you want greater things, then people can pull greater things from you. They can they can dangle the carrot in front of you and pull it away. So you no, do no. care about people. Yes, I don't. Ca- you do. I care. Yes. I care about people thinking that I care about people. Right. You're giving them too much power. Yo, what the fuck is that? <laughs> That's what I care about. Yo, honestly, if you're high right now, you're scratching your head. <laughs> no, no, if you're high right now, you know what the you fuck I'm it. talking you about. Get it. If you high, you got it. You're like, in my, I didn't in get my it. mind, I'm, I'm high right now. In my mind, I'm fucked up right now. No. The thing I learned when I was young was like, okay, boom. I do good in school. All right. Now... The teachers, my parents, everybody wants me to keep doing good. Well, you know, what? I don't feel like doing good anymore. I don't. I don't feel like that. I don't feel like being your trick pony, or your entertainment, or your clown. I just want to be left alone so okay. I can read my comic books. Yeah, but you're also out there. Yeah, exactly. So you you're are very much out there. You meaning, are worried in, about in the, in the public eye. And then I pull back. I because you, it's on his own terms. Is what he's saying. And correct me if I'm wrong. You want to be able to stop and pause and and go forward as you like without others thinking that they can control or how you go or about manipulate. Your thing. Yes. yes, exactly. But no one can manipulate you unless you allow them to. No one can manipulate me. No one can. What's your unless problem? I allow them to. No one has power over me and my feelings and how I live my life. Mm. Excuse me, Doc. What's your sign? What do you think it is? A Taurus. No, I'm a Gemini. Oh. Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what? What do you know about Gemini? Gemini? <laughs> what do you know about Gemini's? Wait, oh, can we go back to you, Miss Lissa? Okay. I think you're a beautiful young woman. Thank you. I'm sure your daughter loves you. To death. Dearly. <laughs> and you have uh, righted the wrongs that you experienced as a parent, um, as, a, as a child, rather. Mm-hmm. And so... Don't give up. I'm going to take off my clinical hat right now and share with you that I am a single mom. Mm. You said to me, single yeah, beautiful div- mom. Thank you, divorced. With the baby hairs. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. And the eyebrows. <laughs> and the edges. Stop. Mm-hmm. And, and, you... and, and the skin is glistening. Listen. You know, before, listen, I tried Pretty to pick mouth. you up before I, before I got settled down. <laughs> he didn't try to pick up everybody, girl. You got to be the other clothes. <laughs> I tried to get your number <laughs> years ago before before I had baby premium. You she missed it. Oh my, my problem with the doctor, the doctor don't have no DMs, though. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't. What's How that? Do... Uh, yeah. Actually, good, she is girl, online. She is online. She's I'm online. I'm on uh, uh, Twitter. Twitter. Yeah. Oh, so you. Oh, internet. What you, are you on Twitter? Internet. You can DM the doctor. What are you on Twitter? I've I've only gotten one DM. What are in you my on whole Twitter? Life. Uh, what, what what's your screen name? Doctor Maya Pettyford. Okay, it's M A Y A P E T I F T T I F O R D. Okay, nice, nice. Internet, get at that. Slide in those DMs. Yeah. Oh. Respectfully, respectfully. Oh. Respectfully. Leave, respectfully. Leave this sick. lady alone. Respectfully. She is respectfully. serving clear Huxboo realness. Leave uh, stop. the DM alone. <laughs> the only, I'm telling you, you having one show that you are a dignified lady, that's why they scared. Leave her alone. But, no, leave her alone. Let me ask you something. Are Zodiac, are, are, are Zodiac signs real? Do you believe in Zodiac signs? Um, Truthfully? Yeah, truthfully. No. 
Okay. But people give them a lot of significance, and I love to hear what significance people and give people them. And people make $5 off of them once in a while. The palm, yeah, you well, know. you know, people go to readers and stuff, and I say, don't do it because they're just yeah, preying on you. It's pretty easy to yeah. manipulate others. Anyway, getting back to what I was saying, I'm taking off my clinical hat. You said to me something about, oh, I have a lot of money. Do you remember the comment you oh, made? You. Out? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. You are making an assumption based upon, I don't know what. Check it. Wait, Checker, wait, 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 no, no, no. What I want to tell you is that I struggled too. Mm. I'm the only person in my family of the eight grandkids who has a college degree. Mm. Everyone else dropped out, dropped out, but I'm the one that persevered. Working class family, single mom, check out the pattern. Um, And I'm here today because of my struggle. So I had a fear of success. I had to take a licensing exam and it cost maybe $750 a pop. And I had to take it in order to be a licensed psychologist in New York three or four times. The passing grade was 75. I got a 72, Mm. a 74, a 73. And at that time I was in therapy and my therapist was amazing. And she said to me that there's something going on in the room. Meaning it's not about my intellectual abilities. It's not my ability to take the test. It's something within me. And we figured it out that I have a, you know, I have survivor guilt. I grew up in a home where there was a lot of abuse. My dad was mentally ill, which is part of the reason why I'm in this field. And I felt guilty that my brother had been physically abused and I wasn't. And so for me to have that come up, it felt uncomfortable. Mm. So you say you're part. You, you say part of the reason why you're in the field. Why? So you could help people because of what yeah. you've seen. Yeah, my dad uh, was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and did not take medication for thirty years and mm. our, made our lives a living hell. Let me ask when you, he was in the household. How many people you think in this world are diagnosed without even knowing? Well, I mean, undiagnosed. I mean, un- undiagnosed. Un- undiagnosed. Like meaning, like how many people? Because I'm telling so you, so many. I'll tell you. I wa- even today. Um, even just driving, I seen this dude walking around with a piece of wood, and uh, I and, and I went to go, and then he was like, "You trying to fucking run me over?" And the look in his eyes, I was like, "Yo, there's something wrong with this mm-hmm, guy." Mm-hmm. Point I'm making is, there's so many people out in these streets who need help, but don't even go. Well, for that's it. why I even say to some people that I see, don't pop off with someone in the street. You have no idea where their mind is. You have no idea whether or not they feel like they have something to lose. People are, you know, unstable. Mm. So turn the other cheek. And mm-hmm. honestly, mm-hmm. and and Keep even, even more so, especially in our culture, especially like in hip hop, the way we, a lot of people where we grew bravado, up, bravado, you know, bravado, exactly. Yeah. Nobody goes to nobody goes to therapy. Nobody goes, you know, um, you know. I'll be honest with you. It's almost like the doctor. I hate going to the doctor. You know, um, it takes me a lot to go to the doctor. And I had coverage and didn't go to the doctor. Same thing with therapy. Mm-hmm. One thing I am proud of, um, it didn't work, but I do believe in marriage counseling. I it do. didn't work? It did, well, it didn't work the first time around. I've been in it. I'm not married again yet. I will be, but I do go and have gone to therapy with her. But are you in individual therapy? Um, I haven't gone in a okay, while. Okay, so I have to say this. It should be marital Counseling or ma- uh, couples therapy should be an adjunct to individual therapy because you each have your own individual shit. You can't cover that. Yeah. Well, we would do when... married one week, individual the next week. Marry one week. That's what we were doing. I, I am a proponent of therapy, individual Separate. therapy separately once or twice a week, depending upon your issues. You know, you know, you know what made me weird and scared to ever really do therapy anymore when I heard my voice. When I was talking, I literally heard myself and I looked at the doc and I was like, I am literally in this room just talking to myself. Like it was the weirdest. I heard my voice like telling her these things that affected me, that bothered me and family stuff that, you know, made me angry and and, and just just trying to be the best I could be. Mm -hmm. And I heard myself fucking talking. And I think that's really all therapy is. Just to, this is my opinion, just to talk and, 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 and to get it out. Well, see, I, it, it's more than that. And I, I'm so upset with myself when I first did the show with you guys. Yeah. The the guy who's a DJ. Uh, ben Hameen, yeah. No, not him. Just Blaze. Just Blaze. Yes. Yeah. He said, 
um, something like, you know, why would I go to a therapist? It's just like paying for a friend. He did say that. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not their friend. I am not your friend. Mm, mm, mm. I am someone who is not going to judge you, who is not going to talk about themselves, who's not going to relate everything you say to themselves and their experiences. I am there to give you unconditional positive regard. That's mm. that's the best friend I could have. Yeah, shit. <laughs> that, <laughs> that is, that's my best friend. We, we, we need more friends like that. Right. You know what? That's the friend that's worth paying for. <laughs> exactly. That, that, listen. I have a question. <laughs> exactly. Is there anything that we can look for like signs that you may be bipolar because sometimes um, I feel like but I like I don't like I was thinking I was bipolar but then one day I just sat back and said maybe I'm not bipolar maybe I'm just no it was Rena actually I said maybe you're not bipolar maybe you're just suppressing your emotions so maybe you just need to keep crying and not just jump right back right, into happy because right. you're trying to cover up, up right your stave emotion. off the depression yeah. it sounds to me like you're probably more depressed than you are yeah a uh, manic like, do you stay up for days on end? Do you spend exorbitant amount of money? Do you um, are you have a highly sexual and sexually active like one after? Not no no <laughs> no. <laughs> She's respectful. She's respectful. No. She's respectful. Um, but everything else, kinda like I am. I do spend a little like like frivolously. Like I'm not really good at saving. What was the first thing you said? Um, do you stay up like for four days straight? Day? No, like, but I do have yeah. bad sleep sleeping patterns okay. like even today like i'm not i'm like that's when i was like really exhausted like yesterday i was up since five and then i hosted something and then i got home like around one you on the grind you on the grind six mm -hmm. and then i'm just been running since then so i don't really get a, i'm not really a sleeper mm -hmm. but why well, you feel that symptoms if somebody yeah, who like stays that, up absolutely a lot? Yeah. Okay. and spending no like taking a credit card and maxing out and taking another one and maxing oh, out. No. It's an extreme. And then there's super extreme, which is there's hypomanic and manic. You don't seem to fall under that. It sounds to me mm. like you have mixed mood, anxiety and depression, situational. Yeah. And once you go to therapy yeah. and talk to someone about, you know, your present difficulties and also your lack of trust with people and your inability to set healthy boundaries. So important to set healthy boundaries because when you don't, and as you say, when people shit on you, it's really not them shitting on you. It's you allowing them to. Mm. 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 Hey, mm. listen. It do you take, <laughs> uh, before Obamacare leaves, like, do you take this? Medicaid? No. What do I need? <laughs> you and I will talk later. Private, yeah, private, talk later. private, private pay. Private you and I, I'm, I'm private, private pay. pay. What, 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 I wanted, what I want to <laughs> ask spending. too is, what, what, Doc, what you're also uh, making me feel like is that uh, the, the benefit of going to a therapist is also talking to someone to learn these trigger points. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And find out things triggers, that you didn't even know. Triggers for your moods and also a greater awareness. Had I not gone to therapy, I would have just thought I'm a terrible test taker. I just cannot pass this test. I'm a fuck up. Right. Mm -hmm. A lack a lack of self-compassion. But with her assistance, I realized that I felt as though I was going to lose a lot. Is my brother going to love me as much if I have a Ph.D. behind my last name? Is my mother going to think somehow um, better than her? Because there have been hints of that mm -hmm. thrown at me. And so it was terrifying to, to move forward because what do I lose? Damn. And, and, and do you understand how I'm just sitting here in this corner? I'm getting, I'm getting joints. Yeah. I'm not going to leave here because I'm going to get some more joints. But when I leave here, I'm going to be like, I'm going to be straight. You know, and, I, and, and, and Doc, I, so. Doc, I think that what, what also I think the problem is for a lot of us, I want to speak for everybody, but, you know, just learning therapy is, uh, you know, like it's put in a box where you say, like, we judge everything. Like, oh, nobody goes to therapy. Uh, mm -hmm. People are scared to go to therapy. It's almost like, you know, I look at it even like my daughter. It's when when you tell them to try something, and she's like, oh, "I don't, I don't, I don't eat that." And I'm like, "Try? Have you ever had it?" And she's like, "No, but I don't like it." Finally, and I convince her to try it. She's like, "Oh, I want to get that again." So the point I'm making to that therapy sense, it's almost like, you know, you open your mind to learn something you didn't even know existed or triggered or or mm -hmm, or, mm -hmm. or, and then you are able to work on it. But if you stay close-minded, and you stay distance and you don't embrace your struggles or your flaws, you'll never know. Areas for growth, there's no such thing as a flaw. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. Strengths and areas well, for Beyonce's growth. Well, Beyonce's flawless, flawless, girl. <laughs> <laughs> and that hair's but, blowing in the wind. Wait, listen. So the way in, in which Miss Lissa, mm -hmm. you know, asked me, so I don't know how to do this. What do I do? 
you know, it's a, it's incumbent upon your therapist to make you feel comfortable. Where do you want to start? Because this is the Miss Lissa show. This is not about me. Mm-hmm. You want a therapist who's willing to work with you to feel comfortable enough to reveal your true self mm-hmm. and to re- reveal your secrets. And I say it's important to be able to have at least one person to do that with. And I've done that. So I can't, I don't ask anything of my, my patients that I haven't done myself. Because mm-hmm. I know it's hard. It is. So you walk in and you say, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I need. And your therapist is supposed to assist you in that. There you go. I think that many people need to find out these tools. So if they do need therapy or whether it be marriage uh, themselves. Individual, family, group. Individual, family. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I think it is important. And, you know, uh, again, I I preach a lot for people to go to uh, marriage therapy. Anybody I speak to, I have a lot of friends and unfortunately and sadly... I mean, I've been a part of it, but seeing people get divorced so much now. And I, you know what's crazy? A lot of them don't even want to go to the marriage counseling. Uh, it, it, either it's one of them who doesn't want to go. And, and from what I learned is when you hear one of them won't want to go, it's over. Mm. It, trust me. Right? Mm. And when you go to marriage counseling, usually when people don't get anything out of it, it's over. Very, very fastly after that. Mm. And I've seen it. I've seen it unfold so many times. But I do tell people to go because it's worth fighting for. And, you know, um, I really think that therapy is something that we stay away from, but it will help us. Absolutely. But before you even get married, go see someone. Yeah. You want to be discerning. You want to make sure that the reason why you're with this person is for healthy reasons, not for codependency, Mm. not because you want to feel good about yourself, not because you think that they're your knight or princess in in armor to save you. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that there's reciprocity and mutuality. You're right, but sometimes... And it's a healthy love. Sometimes, like, uh, you know, sometimes I think I've been in bad relationships over the years because the girls just give so a good head, man. Like, you know, like... Oh, my goodness. No, I don't mean Doc. I'm just being honest. Are you kidding me? No, No, Doc. Doc, you came in here, Doc. You came in here. No, 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 Doc, Doc. Listen, I don't mean oh, no. Doc, my. you came in here. <laughs> oh, my God. No, no, hear me Doc, out. Hear me you out. came in here. You, you thought she was oh, going to get away. I like her PhD. I know, right? She, <laughs> thought, she, she thought she was going to get away. Doc, you thought she was going to come in here and not get sticky? From a man's perspective, I've been with a girl, you know, uh, uh, multiple different girls, that when their head game was crazy... I, I'm, I'm just being honest. I felt like I gotta marry this bitch. You Shut know? your <laughs> mouth! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry is that now, is that because you're Italian? Is that is that what it means in Italian? Like you get you get head, and now it's like you have to be married. No, oh. but, no, because in the Spanish culture, you kiss in the tongue, mm-hmm. and now you have to get married. Oh wow! Yeah, am I right, Rena? As soon as you kiss someone in the tongue, that y'all are married. <laughs> no, all I want to know is why do uh, many? Maybe it's just a New York thing, but why do? New York, Spanish, whatever Spanish, whatever Latin, could be Dominican, uh, Puerto Rican. They all call a sandwich a sandwich. <laughs> I, would I don't understand. I don't, do know. I don't they understand. Say Belena, I, don't, I don't understand. But anyway, you know what? Let's take a quick oh, break. Listen, Dr. Maya Pettifit is in the building. Um, listen, Miss Alyssa already shed some tears. I'm I knew cho- she was going to do what I looked into. I, I, no, I'm, I'm choked the fuck high. up. I said, did she gonna make me cry? Dallas, Dallas is escaping some shit, but you know what, Doc? I want to know more about you a little bit. So when we come back, we're going to try to find some things about Dr. Mario Pettifit. I've already revealed myself to uh, you. Not fully yet. No, no, we we got we to get into the hazel eyes. Yes. We got to find out about these hazel eyes tonight. Internet, get yourself a snack. <laughs> ro- roll something up if you need to. Get, com- get comfortable. Get, get comfortable. Get we'll you be the, right you back. You with the doctor. Be right back. Cheers. What up, y'all? It's DJ Envy. And I am Gia Casey. And we are the Casey Crew. And you are checking out the Premium Pete Show. And Miss Listen Knows. Did Ow. I say it right? Ow. Miss Listen now. Listen now. Hey, 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 hey. 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 <laughs> Ain't no other, other hoes because Miss Listen Knows. Hey. Hey. <laughs> sure. Internet, and we're back sitting here with Dr. Maya Pettiford. The doctor. The doctor. How do you say doctor? Doctorate? Doctorate. Doctor, Doctor, Premium like Pete, Premium Pete, show word of the day. Premium, man, there you go. Listen, Doc, uh, you know. He said documents. One thing, <laughs> <laughs> no, not documents. One thing I really want to know is for, for the internet that I listen, yes, and why we want to push therapy also because I I believe in it so much. There are so many people I feel like bottled things up, depressed, mm-hmm. uh, ready to pause but ready to blow at any time, and that's why I think no, they no should. Pause, no pause. No pause. No pause. Uh-huh. No pause. Okay. Okay. Doc. How does someone even find a therapist? Because I'll be honest with you. When my daughter came to me a couple of years ago, she was like, Dad, I think I didn't want to see a therapist. I called up my insurance company, 
it was impossible to find a therapist. I, I had to leave messages. They got mm -hmm. back to me. Who's booked? Who, who's, you know, who doesn't? How, do you have any suggestions of how someone? Yes, yeah. a few suggestions. Uh, first, there's a website uh, called psychologytoday.com. And what you can do is you can enter your geographic location. And then the, in the filter, you can decide on a gender and also filter your health insurance. So it'll pull up all the names of the therapists who accept your health insurance in a particular area. What you should do is contact three or four, schedule an appointment, and shop for a therapist. I mean, I did. You want to feel like you can relate to the person, that, that it's a fit. And it's not necessarily if race is important to you or gender, then, you know, make those discernments. There's also if you're working, um, if you're dealing with a child who needs uh, help or an ad adolescent, ask the school guidance counselor. Mm. There should be resources there. Right. Um, I get a lot of my patients from local schools. It's just word of mouth. And that that's my preference. But you know, if, if you have insurance, go to Psychology Today because when you call your insurance company, they tend to be outdated. They'll give you outdated resources and referrals and they're of no use. But Psychology Today is updated regularly. Mm. Do you feel like it's a time span where you should stop having therapy or should it be ongoing? Like, how does it, like, you know, how does that work? Well, it depends on what your uh, challenges you're working on and just your tolerance. There's some people who don't want to talk about their feelings and be touchy feely. The way in which I work is I base um, my interpretations and my conceptualizations of what a person's going through on their childhood, the formative years. That influences, in my opinion, how they develop. But there are some people who, let's say, have anxiety problems and they don't want to talk about the parents. They don't want to talk about the past. You can go to someone called a cognitive behavioral therapist and they will give you concrete tools to help you to learn how to alleviate the anxiety. Or if you have a fear of flying or if you have a fear of spiders, whatever the case may be, or going on elevators, it depends on what your tolerance level is for emotions. And I think a lot of people don't know that. Really? So, so there's really, the, there are different tools available yes. to help people with breakthroughs. And everyone doesn't have to kind of divulge their, their entire history. No. No. You know? So, no. Someone could actually break break apart some current pieces yep. for you and, and still help you have a breakthrough and still help you have a, Absolutely. a resolution. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, so if awesome. you don't want to delve into your feelings too much, go for a CBT therapist, a, a cognitive Co behavioral therapist. I am considered psychodynamic. Psychoanalytic is when you're laying on the couch and you can't see your therapist's face. Mm -hmm. Why do people want to do that? Because like you never see their face? No. They're sitting behind you. But you get to shake their hand when you first... Like, <laughs> do the, it's like a blind therapist session now, is it? <laughs> like, it depends like on Dr. the therapist. Maya, still there? Some people they don't like to be touched. Dog. That sounds like some role-playing shit. <laughs> you know? But listen, Doc, you know, yes. I think that um, one thing about therapy, too, I think people think like it's like stuffy or people that they can't relate to or you know because even me like i was telling you when we met years ago mm -hmm. right away i just felt this connection with you and i felt like and, and i did open up and dallas it's, opened it's up the haze of lies. It, it, it has to be but what i'm saying is <laughs> i went through councils where it was like somebody i didn't relate to was like some cowboy guy was like Yee-haw! you know oh I, wasn't, my. I wasn't i didn't re i didn't understand the way he you know um carried himself wasn't what i related to mm -hmm. and i didn't feel comfortable open up to him mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people see people, you know, and judge them real quick. Yes. Therapists like, ah, she doesn't look like some, oh, ah, you know, this or, you know, I guess it's going to take some time to find people. Because I think that process makes people quit. Well, that's why you need to interview people. And no, don't quit. If you're going to make the first phone call, then follow through because the, the rewards are so great. I mean... I see people for all different kinds of stuff. I have a young man who's 17 and he's so sheltered by his family and he's so academically driven, but he has no social skills. I mean, zero. So his parents want to send him to a prestigious college. I'm like, he can't go anywhere. He's going to stay in his room the entire time and learning how to socialize is what going to college is about. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting him to open up and just try to role play. Like if I, I am this girl in your Chinese class, can you say hi? Pretend. Yeah. And we'll go back and forth. I mean, simple. He also, you wait, know. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You provide 
that service over? Oh, stop. <laughs> no, hold on one second. You're, you're going to tell us, we'll you're gonna tell us that no, if, 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 not... if, if, if I contract you. No, not that kind of role play. And, but... you, and, you, and, you, and do you put on a Chinese voice when you're doing this? <laughs> no. Come here. Wait, listen. So I also have a person who actually she just had a discovery that she's been hypersexualized for a long time and fi- find vanilla sex to be very, very uncomfortable turns out that she had been sleeping in bed with her parents at a very young age and they were having sex next to her what and so they she didn't understand what it was mm. but you can hear the sound you don't know if your mom is being hurt or that's and what so i, you I have thought to pretend... my mom was being hurt it was caucasian no it's black folk out here because there was no room there was nowhere oh. else to have I don't know. I'll be honest. I don't know how people do that. Apartment roaches everywhere. I used to cousin I, and aunts was there. There you go. <laughs> I, used, I, I used to I used to rank on one of my friends. Um, he used to. They used to go on the floor because their daughter used to sleep on the bed. Mm-hmm. They used to go on the floor and have sex while their daughter was on the bed. Well, let me tell you something. I don't know how to do. I, I, the only time I ever did something was when when my daughter was born. It was like the first like six months. Um, I remember she was in the crib in the room. And and we we were ha- and about to have and my lady at the time was like yeah let's let's have sex and I was like yeah but what about our daughter she and I'll never forget I I never did it again because as we were having sex I mean that bed was shaking like a like and, and <laughs> no and and my daughter do- my daughter just popped up in the crib and was like da da and I was like oh shit this is crazy I I I, I stopped I, I, you know what I mean like it 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 didn't feel right to me is that damaging even at a young age like that. It, I would say no. She was too not young, at not yeah. at six months, but at, in as a six or seven year old, yeah, absolutely. Course. So as a result, along with you know a couple other situations where in you know there was inappropriate sexual um, interactions, this person cannot have vanilla sex. They like to be tied up with a rope. They like BDSM, anything but face to face with. With a, with a man. Is that kind of because she was over it? Because she hadn't seen it since she was so young? No, it like it's bl- because when she is in it, she's thinking about her parents. Mm. Mm. That's crazy. Is that why so many girls ask me to call uh, them daddy? I don't know. I have no idea. Do you think I it's don't so know. weird about that? When girls or when guys like to be called daddy or when a girl calls a guy daddy? Is that like... Is that, is that uh, uh, parent... Uh, uh, is that like case Father case? issues? Uh, uh, I'm not quite sure. I would I mm, I don't know I don't want to. How, how often do you have to un, to peel back those layers? The, the that person's the been onion? been with me for three years. Yeah. Wow, because she this person's in college, so she goes away and then she comes back for the summer. But I've been working with her all, over the phone because she hasn't found anyone. How to do work you with. keep from like going crazy yourself, like helping all these people? Red wine. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Let me ask you, Doc. Do you nice. get do you, real? Nice. Do you real get talk. sad? Nice. Do, you, do you get sad still? Do I get sad? Yeah. Absolutely. And Absolutely. How you, and how do you deal with that? I talk myself off the ledge. Do you have a therapist still? Like that you work with? Not at the present moment. The last time I saw one was about two years ago. Mm. And I needed it. I mean, in different phases of my life. Adolescence, when I was in college, when I was in graduate school, when I was about to be married, when I was getting divorced. I mean, you name it. I, I utilize it when I felt like things were shaky, but right uh, now, mm. yeah. And as a therapist, don't most of them go see a therapist? No, that is no, they don't. They don't. Okay, so why is it portrayed like that? I feel like I feel like th- they that a lot of therapists go see a therapist because they they have to or they they hear all this stuff going on. They need to you know speak yes. to somebody else. Well, it depends on the therapist. It also depends on the kinds of cases you're hearing. Uh, you know the issues that you're hearing. I'm not working with sex offenders every day. Mm-hmm. I'm not working with uh, uh, patients who have or who are incest or you know rape survivors. Every it depends on the content. It also depends on your ability to filter. Mm. When I first started practicing, I was working at a state hospital, and I was working on the forensic unit, and I was working with sex offenders, people who had thrown Molotov. Molotov cocktails at their folks' house killed people, mm. and I wanted to be the best therapist possible, and I could not sleep. Right, I was not sleeping. I had to go on a medication. Yeah, to help me. What, what kind of contact did you have with the with, with these clients? I mean, were you behind? No. A glass Hi, you were... how you doing? Really? Yeah. And you would be put with with these types of clients, like in that close proximity. 
I was on a forensic unit. People who had been found not guilty by reason of insanity. Mm. That's crazy. Do you feel like, because you did mention that you were divorced, do you feel like your job had anything to do with the wedge that was caused with like you and your... Um, my partner? Yeah. My partner? Um, my <laughs> former husband? Um, no. In fact, I believe that me getting healthier is the reason why I got divorced. He was my high school sweetheart. Right. We had a lovely codependency. I didn't think I was smart. I didn't think I was beautiful. I didn't think anyone would love me. I didn't think that uh, anyone would love my crazy family. And so I stayed with this person even though they were not kind to me. Oh, damn. What was his sign? You mean verbally? <laughs> you, damn. you mean like verbal abuse? Verbally unkind. Verbally He's unkind. I, I, was he? Uh, May 8th. I don't know what sign that is. Taurus. Taurus. I knew a Taurus was somewhere in your proximities. <laughs> Doc, how bad is verbal abuse? Because, you know, unfortunately, I think that has been an issue in a lot of my relationships where we, sadly, you know, um, we, we beat each other down. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you get mad, you, you say all these crazy things and you, you know you love someone, but you, verbally is, is bad. You know, Well, it, then it you don't you. love them. Right. You know? That's an unhealthy love. I'm actually working with someone who has a codependency with his girlfriend. She will drink. She will call him up. And if he doesn't do what she wants him to do, you fucking piece of shit. I hope you die. I mean, it's it, it takes a lot for me to hear that because mm. I'm protective of all of my patients. Yeah. Sure. So I have to turn off the like, I want to get at this person, mm, honestly. Mm, 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 mm. And Talk he about it. Continue, Put a raise in your <laughs> He continues to go back to her. Mm-hmm. Does he have like mother issues? Or did yeah. mom get abused? Or just it's people, codependency? People, You're used people to don't be. People know how to move on. Well, also, when we've been exposed to that kind of abuse, we're conditioned. We become desensitized to it. So for me, that's shocking. I would not allow any man to talk to me in that way, mm -hmm. or a woman for that matter. For, but for them, it's the norm. He's right. used to it, so it's not. It's not unusual. Right. So. Being, his being in therapy is getting him to not be the caretaker and take care of her, you know, at the expense of himself and also get to love himself and know that there's someone else out there that will want you and also to feel because he's cut off from his emotions. If you can allow someone to talk to you that way, you don't feel anything. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. So if you're that person, go see a therapist. Mm -hmm. I sabotage myself in like relationships and that's another reason why. I'm not in one. Like, when I feel like when I like someone, that's when I start pushing them away. Like, I don't. Yeah, because you have it. trust issues. Yeah, I just be like, I'm good. But you're not good. We all thrive in partnerships. Mm -hmm. We were not meant to, in terms of our biology, to be alone. Right. Just to procreate, to be warm. I mean, I go get massages once a week because I want hands on me. Rub and tug? <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we can suffer from touch deprivation. It's really so important. Why do you think our skin is so sensitive? Because we're meant to embrace and to feel. Doc, let me ask you something. Um, yes. When I go for massages, I go for the rub and tug. <laughs> <laughs> what do they do for you? Wait, but now I'm cuddling with my daughter. Am I, am I like, creating well, they can be, some they can be a tug. with that? I don't know. I don't know what the level of your interactions are. Nothing crazy but, like, okay. like your friend but, now, but can I say something? Client. Let's not try to pathologize everything that you th think and do and the ways in which you behave. Mm. Okay. You're okay. Okay. Right, don't over -diagnose. No, we can always improve, but we are okay. D Doc, if you touch my arm again, you're going <laughs> to... I'm gonna, a toucher! You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna get me pregnant, okay? <laughs> Doc, I want to have one more, baby. Doc, no, no, uh -oh. no, you're going to get me pregnant. It, <laughs> it may happen tonight. Let me tell you. Uh, let me tell you, Doc, hearing everybody's problems. Yes. Uh, you ever feel like that affects you? Uh, Not anymore. Like I said, I had to go on medication because I wasn't sleeping. I wanted to be perfect. I wanted to help and fix everyone. Now I literally leave it in the room. Yeah. I do. I'm just like kind of like leaving your job, like when, when at the door. Say, yeah, leave it at or the leaving door. it. Yeah, and and and, yeah. and come home and mm -hmm. and and live life. Absolutely. You know. Where, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Where are you and your ex husband now? Like, as far as do you still contact him? Is it done? Being that you guys were together for so long. And created a kid. Yeah. Yeah. How did um, that end? Uh, it ended well. I mean, it ended. So that, for me, is well. Um, 
he is remarried and has another child and I have full custody of my daughter and she sees him often and our interactions are quite brief. Okay. I interact with him mostly or primarily through email because the things that he did during the divorce proceedings were uh, reprehensible. And so you don't, you don't have my, he doesn't have my respect any longer. Mm -hmm. So I just keep it moving. Well, at least I am grateful that we came together and created my daughter. But I'm not grateful that she has a small mouth, which resulted in her needing to have baby teeth extracted because they won't come down. Aww. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a big mouth and big teeth. She has my teeth in his little mouth. <laughs> well, at least, at least, you know, you, you got a pretty it. mouth. Ooh. Oh, my God. <laughs> mouth. M-O-U-F. <laughs> um, I'm glad that at least that, you know, I think in this day and age, it's, it's important that parents um, separated get along. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even if it's formal, you know, even if it's, you know, uh, because here's the thing. And I spoke about this on previous episodes. It's not about you and her. It's about the kid. And, you know, I always say if if the guy's a good father, forget all that other bullshit. I Let agree. them see the kid. Let them, you know, and, and, and vice versa. Don't hold your personal thoughts or feelings or anything uh, against that kid because the kid suffers from that. And I always tell people, too, don't. Tell your kids what you think of the mother, or the mother don't tell no. your kids what you think. No. I see. I, I see a lot of mothers say, "Your yeah, father's a piece of shit." I know. I don't let them yeah. figure it out themselves exactly. because they will when they get older. Mm -hmm. right. Exactly. And that's a quick way to ruin a kid. Because let me tell you, you know, I saw this today. Ruin. I, I appreciate <laughs> that. I appreciate. It. Are I, you any? I don't even know. Uh, let's, let's, ruin. Let's do it. I, no, no, ruin. I thought ruin. it was R O O N, like macaroon. <laughs> I'm one of those Italians that have a problem pronouncing things. I don't know what the have fuck. Have you? My when's the last is. time you went to Italy? Like maybe like seven years. You need to go to England. Go or English. You know, I want. I want to. I want to <laughs> I wanna say. No, this. we don't actually. Where my fa <laughs> where some of my family fuzz where, where my where him where some of my family is from. <laughs> in Sicily is this little town called Castle Mare di Gulf. Okay. The boss, there's a mob boss mm -hmm. in that in that area. She's a woman, and one of the most feared. Mm. Many people don't know that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of woman mob bosses that still exist in Italy, mm -hmm. Mm. more than men. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's unusual. Yeah. So it's a matriarchal. Matriarchal society as opposed it's to patriarchal. Secret society, all you actually <laughs> trust. You yeah, bring, it, bring it back to Africa. Now, <laughs> ha have you considered yes. uh, writing a book? Because the thing, the thing I want to get from you, the thing I like to get from you, what? are are just kind of daily affirmations or da daily tools that I can use. I can get up like what you gave Pete, which is the sun is out. I wake up. I'm alive. Boom, let me enjoy the day. Let me be present in the day. Mm -hmm. And you telling Pete that reminded me to do that. Hmm. I woke mm -hmm. up today mm -hmm. feeling effed up. Oh. I woke up today just feeling turned down. I was ready to, to call in out of work. I was just, I was like, fuck it. What was wrong? Um, I don't know. I felt tired. I I had gone to the doctor last night and, and uh, gotten some treatment on my foot. I don't know. I, I was just feeling a little beat down. Mm -hmm. And and I don't know. I'm I'm not really happy at my job right this minute. I was looking for a promotion. It was supposed to come through last month, didn't come through. So now I'm kind of like you know. Whatever. Fuck this job. I'm down. I'm not, I'm not fuck it, but I'm like I need it. Well, you're sad about not getting what you think you deserve. Yes. Yes, I am. And that coupled with having to get treatment for yourself physically, it's like fuck. You know, when is something right gonna happen? And we sometimes isolate in that way. Like we just choose the couple bad things without seeing the big picture. Mm -hmm. Did you have a dream last night? Nightmare? No, I actually I was I was a total blank. I came home from the doctor. I was just feeling beat down. The the treatment was kind of it was a bunch of needles and stuff. Mm. So I just went to I just flatline. I went to sleep. Okay. Is it bad not to remember your dreams? It's not bad or good, but they're wonderful data i mean t mm. give oh, me a wet dream dreams are the best man <sighs> wait you no, could, you could analyze the oh dreams. i love i keep analyzing having this, this reoccurring dream love. Mm. tell me i keep being on a train but it's not a train in new york like it feels like the metro in like europe or something and before i used to always be running for it and as soon as i would get on it i'll wake up but now lately i've been riding in it like Ooh. i'm on it so i'm Seeing scenery, but I don't get to the destination yet. 
So I used to always be running for it. Now I'm on it. That's called pre cum. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, Doc. I'm sorry. I'm being inappropriate sometimes. I know. It's okay. I like Dr. to Phil laugh. End up with Dr. Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so how do you interpret your dream? I mean, I thought that, you know, just always being in the pursuit and, you know, just like always just trying to make it. And that's why every time I would get on the train, I would wake up because I wasn't there yet. Or maybe I was scared to get there. So now I'm riding in it, but I haven't gotten there yet. They're just trying to figure out where I'm going. Sounds perfect. Do you know where so you're listen, going So uh, listen, also trains are, are very phallic. So when, when I think of you chasing the train, I think of you chasing love. Mm. That's if, guys, men. I'm giving you gay. It depends. No, no. no. I, I'm just asking. I don't want to make assumptions. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So you're running after love. Right. Do you have someone presently? Mm-mm. She's dry. Oh, man. That is so disgusting. No, no. I don't mean, I don't, <laughs> so, no, I don't mean that. I mean, that <laughs> I mean, no. So I, perhaps in addition to you feeling comfortable enough to get on the train and being prepared enough to get on the train to travel. Maybe now you are emotionally feeling like you can also get on that particular train. The love train. The love yes, train. the love oh. boat. The love train. And when we're thinking about our dreams, know this, that even though the different characters in the dream are different characters, they're also different parts of yourself. So I had a patient come in the other day and he was saying that when he woke up, he felt like right before he had awake, awoke waking up um awoken, he, awoken sure. thank you um something heavy was on him right. heavy on his back and when he turned around he saw a flash like a person walking away right. so the way in which we dis- deconstructed it the w- weight on his back was himself mm. so your dreams are your outlet for things that you don't process in your conscious everyday you know comings and goings right. but it's your your brain or your psyche's ability to discharge it and help you to see things that you are maybe trying to avoid or need some enlightenment with. What about like dreams about death? Like if you dream that someone dies or you dream that you died, like what does that mean? I, I go to a I've dream never book. Had that. Yeah. I go to a dream book for that, but okay. it's anxiety, like your teeth falling out. They Anx- say that that means death. Girl. No, anxiety. And what about paralysis? Is that what it's called? Like Sleep you, paralysis, yeah. anxiety. Oh. They said that's the devil. Take take take, well, a, you take can... a volume for that. You... <laughs> well, then you definitely. <laughs> you no, know, when I was little, it. that used to happen to me a lot. Like I would wake up, but I couldn't move like my legs or my body. Like I never knew what that was. I used to scare the hell out of me. So I used to sleep with my feet off the bed because as long as my feet were off the bed, if I would wake up, I could twinkle my toes, and then I would like get you force yourself body. awake. Yeah. But that used to happen to me a lot when I was little. Well, your life was very unpredictable, so it makes sense to me that you would have anxiety. You know, and feel paralyzed. Yeah, anxiety. Anxiety is a, a scary thing. I think there's a lot of people that that have anxiety. Absolutely. You know, uh, also I think that there's so many people out there that um, you know, they go through life not really ever wanting to find out what their problem is. So it's like they're living with these issues and never getting them checked out or looked at. I mean, there's people. I feel like I I know people in my family that could be uh, um, could be autistic. Mm-hmm. And never really got checked out for it. They're all so much older now. Right. You know? you know, there's so many things I think of, you know. But more more importantly, I think that, you know, um, with therapy, I think it's about really just wanting to do this. Wanting to speak to people. Wanting to find people that, that, that you know, that you can get comfortable with to talk about this shit. So you could be... a you know a better person right but you know what ignorance is bliss sometimes people are afraid to deal with their pain because they think that they'll be swallowed by it Mm. absolutely it's it's easier to run it's easier to run from it than it is to to embrace it right but i think you know what i want to implore everyone that's listening is that your life you feel so much lighter I mean, I, I try to get my patients to, to become more innocent and there's a wonder and a joy. Like I tell them, do pirouettes in the street because life is worth living. I mean, you want to live. Yeah. I don't want to just get by. Right. But sometimes it's easier. It's Sometimes it's easier to just get by. And I'm not knocking those people because I know a lot of people have shame and, and embarrassment attached to treatment. Like I have a cousin who's schizophrenic or rather he suffers from schizophrenia. 
I told my aunt, bring him to my clinic. I will get him meds. He will be in a group. They'll help him find a job, all that. 10, no, it had to have been at least 15 years wow. went by. This guy, my cousin would talk to himself. No one wanted to get in a car with him because they were afraid that he might reach over and take the steering wheel. Wow. It was her shame and embarrassment that put off his becoming well. Mm. What about like T-Rex? Tourette's? Uh, uh, the, yeah, well. He said T-Rex? <laughs> he said Tourette's. <laughs> no, is that like, because I used to mess with this girl. Um, I didn't. Even, she never even told me. And, you know, we dated, you know, a couple of dates and stuff like that. And, and, and she used to just like make like, uh, uh, like make like a noise. And a little grunting. Yeah, and yeah, I was yeah. like, what the fuck is that, you know? And I'll be honest with you, you know, I prayed for her. But I couldn't really mess with her no more because, like, we used to, like, you know, even getting intimate. She was making these weird noises, like, before we even did anything. And, and, you know, like, yo, you turn into a T Rex again? No, it was <laughs> tough. Yeah. It, was tu- it was tough dealing. It was tough dealing, you know, as a relationship, it was tough. But how is that even? Is that a sign of something? Like- I, I don't know very much about Tourette's, but I think had she told you what her issue is rather than you trying to guess. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. All right, but she had shame and embarrassment, yeah. and you didn't bring it to the light. I mean, it's like the elephant in the room. I should have said something about it. That should have, could have, I mean, be, again, self-compassionate. You didn't because it was uncomfortable and you didn't want to make her feel uncomfortable because you're that guy that likes to, you know, <coughs> hug everyone and make them feel good. Now, nah, you know, I, I definitely, you know, want to, ha- like, like, I just feel like, you know, as we wind this episode down, you know, uh, depression, again, I want to go back to depression. It's something so many people deal with. Uh, people wake up every day, again, like, like, like sometimes like I do, not knowing why. Even though I'm still tackling my depression, mm-hmm, you know, um, mm-hmm. I've been able to help other people and I will continue to help other people. And I tell people out there, if you're going through depression, don't bottle it up inside. There's tons of people who are going through the same stuff. Don't feel alone yes. and speak to someone, even if it's one person, you know, whether it be a cousin or, or, or an uncle or aunt, find someone you trust. I think people are afraid. You know, think about it this way. Think about suicide. How much and how many people commit suicide you know why they rather die than talk about or face their issues well i remember tax said you know he believed that people who were who committed suicide he had no empathy in the beginning and he thought that they were you know punks or suckers but actually people who commit suicide are the bravest motherfuckers out there because they say i don't want to deal with this and i'm done yeah. And it's hard to do that. It is. I'll tell you. I it was... is hard to do that. So, yes, if you're feeling like you are suicidal, call the hotline. There are so many resources. And you know what? It might not be cool in the hood, but, I mean, the hood's not going to take care of you as good as, as someone well, like my... The... I always say fuck the hood because you know why? We grew up in it. So many things are ass fucking backwards. People, you know, we don't prepare for death. We don't take care of our health. You know, I, I like I said, I I think I went to the doctor like three times in like fourteen years. Go to the doctor, everybody. No, but what I'm saying is like the things that 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 uh, that we say that we're supposed to like live by are all the things that don't make no sense because if I followed the ways of the people of the street, I didn't build my credit to a long time. I didn't fucking save up or get a bank account. I put everything under my mattress. Right. You know what I mean? Like all those little things, just as you get old, don't make no sense. No. You know, I, I'm gonna admit that I'm bipolar. Okay, I thought you were going to say you're bisexual. I was like, fuck. <laughs> you know. Okay, sorry. I mean, I have bought sex. Oh, bisexual. Yeah. P-U-Y. Okay, no, I get no, but it. I'm I'm bipolar because at the uh, bodega, mm-hmm. they have this polar seltzer water. Why are you? <laughs> and stop. Like, they have raspberry flavor. Stop, lemon stop, lime. stop. So Wait. I do bipolar. Stop. So you asked me, why, when am I going to write a book? I'm not going to write a book. I love to write. But this is not my thing. I'm very. Hey, you got Chris behind you. You should write a book. No, it's okay. See, I don't need Chris to write my book. No, I don't mean. Oh, you hey, got listen. Chris behind you. Uh, uh no. Or, or, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Doc, what do you? Um, <laughs> what? what do you? What do you think about people who self-medicate themselves? Meaning, like you know, um, they get high, they get drunk, um, because they don't want to face their issues, and you know. Well, they, I think I've said this on tax and and other. Sh- well, no, for tax. Um, it's unhealthy. You, it, it's, it doesn't help the problem. You're just putting a Band-Aid on it. Tax like, don't but worry, it's don't easier. Like I do say I don't need no medicine. And, but now, in his present situation, he doesn't have access to that. Yeah. So if he I had developed he this... Even more. I, I, 
What do you think? Okay, I'm smoke? under the impression that he doesn't. So let's say you're not I hope hooked he is. up. You go into a situation without tools. Right. Mm-hmm. You're fucked. Now you're yeah. Withdrawn. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So why? And you can't deal with your anxiety. You can't talk yourself down. You can't ground yourself. You can't, you know, do the stop, you know, the thought stopping. You have to develop skills. If not, then, you know, you'll be using, abusing drugs forever and, and substances. And then it ultimately has a detrimental effect on your body. And that's one other problem. Does listen, it, if you don't like pain, stop med- self-medicating. Mm-hmm. Listen, but now, hold on. Now, let's rewind now. You say you're not going to write a book. <laughs> I'm not going to uh, write a book. Again, all these tools that you have, all these techniques that you have, how do you... I give them to my peoples that are my patients. But you could you could make them. I do it here with you guys when you That's when true. I give. This is my opportunity to share with people who would otherwise you know be be in in treatment. True. This is the give back right here to the absolutely community. for the community. And well, I listen, love the community. Well, Doc, you've been dropping gems, and now it's time for us to go to our segment. You're not going to even let her. No, I want to no. know. What, what? what do you want to know? I need to know because I feel like you've done like all of these podcasts, but you started on the Combat Jack show trying to help Pete. <gasps> yes. Dallas Penn was in the building and I'm like, for us to just like, just go over like, oh yeah, whatever. Like, I don't trust people. Like, we're not doing that. Like, well, can I say this about these two guys? First of all, the level of maturity, I had an opportunity to speak with, um, Dallas in the green room. Can we call it that? Yes, yeah, we call absolutely. It. And I was just so that was in the smoking room. Astounded by his maturity, he is like a sage, and you have grown so much, and you do care about yourself, and it's so apparent. The only thing that I'm not liking is a sticker on the top of your hat. You are lovable, and I think that <laughs> you should honestly share with the world. And I don't know to what degree you have, especially people in our community. The, the importance of taking care of yourself because a lot of the, the physical maladies that we experience, we bring on to ourself through our poor diet, yes. lack of exercise. Yes. But yes. again, we need to talk about, you know, the poverty. And I saw a girl eating potato chips for breakfast the other day. Mm. That's real. Why? Because maybe the parent wasn't available. Maybe she couldn't make it in time for free breakfast or whatever maybe that's the all case the money is. She had. That's real talk. Maybe she was, you know, uh, you know, uh, basically only had a dollar or something, you know, and trying to make the best of, of what she had. Okay, so that also brings a, a greater point, which is that when you know people are struggling, you have a little bit more, look out for people. Right. That's what makes us special. Mm. Spreading, as, spread, as spreading the As a species, love. absolutely. We have so much. Even if it's a dollar a quarter, help out the next person. Exactly. No, pay it forward. And I tell Dallas all the time, too, with, 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 you know, I'm proud of him because, you know. He's so beautiful. He's so compo- the composure. <laughs> there's composure and you're allowing me to see your eyes because the, la- the yeah. la- last time I saw him he was hiding behind these really weird sunglasses yes, yes, and telling the all these little yeah. weird jokes about nuts on the brain <laughs> <laughs> and making fun of me I had, and my, just like, I had my shades here tonight <laughs> I didn't put them on tonight but now I see your eyes I'm like oh snap what? Uh, red and blurry yeah. oh snap Listen, Dallas is you know Dallas had a scare you know almost lost his foot you know and uh, being diabetic and, and dealing with that I'm proud of him because and I, and I say this a lot is, is I'm proud of him because I know it's not easy to stay healthy no it's not it, it's, it's almost like being on the other side uh, uh, you know I, I try it once in a while and it's fucking <laughs> it's like fucking it's like it's like I don't know it's like it's like having dry sex, you know what I mean? Like No, like, I like, don't actually. So, okay. he's also I'm touching you again. <laughs> mm-hmm. you he's are. also just such a sweet guy and you should have a form for sharing what you've experienced. And getting to Pete. Oh, and you got married. I did get married. Yes. That's so lovely. I did get married. That's very I lovely. But I've been I've been with homegirl. We've been home we've been dating for a while. I was actually trying to get the Guinness record for engagement. <laughs> <laughs> and then when she found out, she was like, nah, you gotta get married now. Good. But I wanted to be like forty years, fifty years engaged. No. Who does that? You do, or you would have. I would have. I would have had it. Sick, well, it sounds like fuck. she she it enhances your life, and that's what a partner should do. A wife, a lover. Yes. Enhance it. Yes, not indeed. make it. Yes, indeed. And Pete here with your new baby, with yes, his yes, doc. You are mature, and I'm 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 glad to see you thriving. I think that you are where you need to be, and that was just a stepping stone. You want to be around people who respect your ideas, and and your personhood, and your generosity. Mm. 
Thank you, Doc. And stop avoiding going to therapy. You need to go to think no, about I'm, the box. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm no, I'm going to. No, well, don't say you're going to. No, I, I really think that you would benefit greatly. Yeah. Personally, you mean. And, and I say because of your. Yes. Yes. Okay. Personal growth. You say that. What were you saying? You say that because of Because what? You're of your depression. You never dealt with being in the box. And it, it is, you know, you're suffering for, from something akin to PTSD. All of the traumas. There are traumas in everyday life. And then there's the kind of trauma that you experience for months at a time yeah and 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 more importantly it's just always you know wanting to be better that's it's depressing meaning like not getting where like, like not sat dissatisfaction dissatisfaction you know yeah. like wanting to provide more one and 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 like you spoke about like you know we're, we're we're creative so you know you knock down a wall you knock down a wall and you, you sometimes you, you're like, damn, am I ever going to get a break? Well, no. how about just sitting and enjoying the walls that you've knocked down? I know. And that's what I need to do more. Exactly. To pause and to be present. Take a moment to appreciate. Yeah, that's why books and stuff. I'm like, no, I just want to plan a trip and hang out with my daughter. Mm. Yeah. I just want to, you know, literally skip down the street and be silly. Mm -hmm. Those things, you know, bring me joy. I it's a simplicity. Yeah. Mm. There it is. C a couple of quick questions, Doc. couple. All right. Um... <laughs> We've talked about this on on the, on the show previously and and today. You're gorgeous. You're you're incredibly gorgeous. Mm. Thank you. How I do the you compliment. have these these intimate discussions with clients, and you know someone you know male female not have a not get Tony Soprano. I mean, <laughs> and not have to go on a date. I mean, how do you ever come into these uh, these difficult situations where? clients want more of your time because you're so easy to talk to so beautiful to talk to um i did when i was working on an inpatient unit i had people who approached me and i had to let them know that there is a power differential at least in that particular setting we're in a locked unit i'm a psychologist let's say we did hook up i hooked up with a patient and then i discovered that he was eyeing another patient i might get beside myself and write some notes that indicate that you're not ready to leave. Right. When you're really ready to leave. So you don't want that. I would literally say that to people. There are other situations where people express a, uh, a connectedness or I like you. And I think that that's just, I would flip it and be like, it's because you feel heard. It's not sexual. Mm -hmm. It's a connection. Mm-hmm. So that's what it is. It's not, you don't, you don't want to kick it with me. It's because mm -hmm. you make them feel like they matter. <laughs> They do matter. Well, they don't feel like it, but you let them know that uh, they matter. It's the, um, it's the unconditional positive regard. People right. are not used to that, and mm -hmm. so they form attachments, but I've not no. Right, I'm feeling like a parental attachment, like like a mom attachment. Like, So I may have some mom issues. No, but but if it's a mom attachment, then it's it can be positive. Yeah, right? but Dallas likes grandmas. He's, he likes <laughs> no. I'm, I'm, you, I'm meaning, physically attracted to grandmother type. Well, meaning that you know, you know, you feel like I'm I'm caretaking you mm -hmm. in a way that a mom would. I do. I feel like I could just lay down in your lap right now. <laughs> she, would, she would take care of your foot too. That that your foot, that disgusting fucking foot. His, his foot looks like Adrian okay, Broner. Okay, last question. Last yes, question. Yes, right. One of okay, two last questions. question. Last, last question. question. So, internet. I see that the doctor's hands, uh, she's got a clear manicure on her fingers. Yes, I do. Um, she's wearing some shoes tonight that, um, <laughs> what what's, what's the polish on the toes? Can we learn what the polish on the toes it's is? It's clear. I don't put polish on my toenails during the, the winter time, but I do get pedicures. You do? Okay, so then there's a clear polish on them right now. Mm, one layer. I have pretty feet. Okay. You do my friend looked okay. my I'll play with and your I have feet. a nice arch. Foot fetish. He ain't going wow. <laughs> <It's so fur. laughs> Let me it, tell you it, something. It, I have a healthy vanity about my feet. Internet, y'all won't get that picture, but trust me, we won. Everyone inside the booth tonight that likes that won. It's like Krista saw a nip. He like. <laughs> hey, listen. We need to take. We that need was to like take. an areola for Chris. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me too. Me oh too. my gosh! Shout out! I kind of fuck with feet shout too. Shout out to all the foot fetish people. <laughs> we know. Sucking toes worldwide. The internet needs to know you got this nail polish. On. <laughs> Never wear shoes that are too small. It's bad for your feet. I'm sure it is. Mm. Listen, internet. So let's, let's get to I don't trust people segment. Uh, let me tell you how it is, Doc. Yes. So we started this segment. It's been uh, uh, from the beginning of the show, and it has stuck. I don't trust people is uh, 
what we do is we find out who you don't trust or what you don't trust. Okay. It's this. You know how to get involved. Hashtag I don't trust PPL on Twitter at Premium Pete, Premium Pete Show, Miss Listen Knows, Dallas Penn. Let us know what or who you don't trust. And like I say, and I say it all the time, if it ain't no fuck shit, we're going to feature it on a future episode. Who we got this week? Our first submission comes from Seed Popular. I don't trust people who constantly use the Snapchat dog filter. I agree, man. Especially guys, man. I don't know what. Guys, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know what like the fuck, guys. guys. I don't I like see, when guys use it either. I see guys out here with the fucking thing. The tongue comes out. The roof of like I get. The, and then they have a new one with like a dot on the, like a mouse or something. Yeah. I don't like it either. And the one with the flowers and the light eyes and the slim face, like girl, stop. I tell you, makes it, yeah. I tell you one thing. I will say is that Instagram. I feel like almost. Th- you know, basically, you know, and uh, Snapchat. And Snapchat. If, if you're still fucking with Snapchat, I really don't trust you for fucking with Snapchat. But their filters, filters, you got to take the filters. But their filters are gotta, crazy. Yeah, you got to take the Snapchat filters to the Instagram. Post. They're trying, but you know, hey, listen, people like convenience. Instagram let you stay in one place. Think about that. Right. When you create, think about. They wanted to keep you in one place and not go anywhere. They and, did it. And, and they have done it, even yes. though they they bit, and that, that goes to show you. But not, but that's why Instagram doesn't let you hyperlink inside a post. That I mean, you you go, you would leave Instagram, you would leave the app. Yeah. If you would, if you would be able to open up hyperlinks. Yeah. All yeah. Right? I mean, so they keep smart. you right inside Instagram. Yes. But, but keep in mind, and that's why in this day and age, people creating the biggest create the biggest creation is convenience. When you when you create something that's convenient for people, so they could get all their stuff done in one thing, mm. they won't leave because they people don't want now. you to leave. Mm-hmm. And Instagram, I feel like, has done a great job of that. I mean, look, you know, doing the stories has created like another platform for them. Well, just keep in, in perspective. Videos. Also, yeah. right now, internet service providers are allowed to take your personal information and market it to people that want to buy it from them. Exactly. So. Well, Instagram is killing because people are staying inside their app, whether they're using the live function, the, the, the stories, the stories or, the, or, or, the or, the, or the regular posts, which are still, and even video, even one-minute videos. Right. So, so Instagram is going to be killing with all the users that stay within that app and, and conversate with one another and just basically use that. Exactly. So, you know, just and, be and mindful. And you know what? Just, just for, the, for, for the listeners at home, I want to let them know something, that um, Dr. Maya Pettifit is a real... Um, you know, doctor. Yeah, that she's, she's not, <laughs> not an like Instagram. Trey. She's not an Instagram doctor. fucking doctor, no, no, right? Not no, a Twitter no, doctor. No, she's not a Twitter doctor. Who we got next? <laughs> Our next one comes from Brazen Man Hussy. I don't trust people that don't know how to use two t o versus two t o o in a sentence. Mm. Don't worry, we got you. T o is uh, we going to the store. Mm-hmm. And T O O is are you coming to like also. also. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, okay, I get it. Listen, you got it? Thanks for the lesson. Okay. Thanks for the lesson. T W O is how much kids you gonna claim on your taxes. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate his uh yeah. his um you know change. Um and the next one comes from Slim Shady Baby eighty two. What's up? I don't trust people that walk around barefooted in the gym locker room, especially near urinals. Well, let, me, oh. let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Obviously, people know uh, uh, I talk uh, plenty full about my jail stints. Uh, I wore slippers, man, because that mm-hmm. fungi on that floor. Mm-hmm. Let me you, tell you. You would never get rid of that. No, never. Never. You get that. Let me tell you something. What's that called? Athlete's foot? Yeah. Huh, that shit is like fucking. That's called inmate's foot. <laughs> yeah, shit. <laughs> let me tell you something. And in the gym, it's got to be the, the sweat and the dirtiness. If you let me tell you something. Honestly, I don't mean to judge somebody, but if you walk around the gym barefoot, you are a scurvy motherfucker. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so I'm not gonna say I walked around, but because I'm not gonna lie to the internet, I've been guilty of a quick sock change, and you're not gonna judge me. Like one time, and I did put the tissue down because I didn't have the towel. Because now that I don't work at Crunch no more, I'm going to a cheaper gym. Uh, and I had to put the paper down real quick, and my foot accidentally went off the paper when I switched socks. Ooh. It happened. Don't worry. Sometimes the I'm not an athlete. I'm still, I I'm still, <laughs> I still got the baby mama foot. Don't worry. <laughs> Shouts to him. Who we got next? Our last one comes from For Real Doe. I don't trust people that look at the ground when conversing. Hashtag keep it on eye. Well, That's not very kind. No, no. And I'll tell you one thing. You're not going to get far in life. Business, uh, woman, 
um, anything if you can't look somebody in the eye. Yeah, but that's not kind because a lot of people have anxiety about looking at others because of what it reveals in them. It's not a sign of disrespect. Some people just are shy in that way. Right, because your eyes are the windows Right, the my soul. dad taught me always look a person in the eye. Exactly. That's important to me. But just because someone doesn't do it doesn't mean that it's a sign of disrespect is what I'm saying. No, but what I'm trying to say is you're right. But what I'm trying to say is it's a tool they should use in life. Because Absolutely. Because when you look to somebody in the eyes, they feel uh, you could trust somebody more. You could see a lot more. And it, and, and, and it is. It well, is what Peter says is, is that somebody's going to have a, a longer uh, way to go if they can't look someone in the eyes. And you yes. know what? They are. Yeah. yeah yes. But remember, there are some people who may have been exposed to abuse and looking their parent or whomever, the abuser in the face, was a sign of disrespect. So they were taught to mm. look down. You, so yeah. you really just don't know. You never yeah. know what someone else is going through. True. Doc, do you have something that you don't trust or what you don't trust? Um, no. No? you don't. So you trust everybody? Um, uh, pretty much until they give me a reason to distrust them. Okay. Okay. You know, so you don't you don't trust people that have fucked up on you. Um, it depends. Oh, you still give them trust, even though they've it depends up? if they've earned it back. You know, but you, uh, people don't get a lot of chances. You don't get a lot of chances. Do you I'm trust not, people uh, that wear lug boots? Ugg boots? Lugs, lugs, lugs. You ever heard of lugs? I've heard of lugs. I don't know what lug boots look like. Man, I wouldn't trust them. I would trust the them. That's not nice. Oh. <laughs> Doc is bougie. That's I'm not bougie. bougie. Like, I'm more them. hippie-ish. Like, I take off my shoes. No one's allowed to wear shoes in my apartment because you step on saliva, you step on poop, you step on urine. Take your shoes off before you go into your houses immediately upon entering. If not, you track it all over your place. You just want to keep a clean house. I don't trust people that what? like touch you or bump into you and then say, excuse me, like, bitch, do you need a time machine? Because you, you, like, <laughs> you want me to oh excuse my. you now? Yeah, I think there's a, a certain, Now that you already bumped into me? <laughs> there's a certain time limit that you have to do certain things. I need it to happen first. You see, I'm in your way. You can't bump me and then excuse me as we touch, like, uh-uh. I agree. I see, agree. See, you guys are smart. I can't can't come up with funny stuff like that. I'm, the spontaneity isn't there. That's sad. Don't worry about it. You help. Everybody is, is you know, has this. I have self-compassion. It's okay. Yeah. But yeah. internets, you know how to get involved. <laughs> Hashtag and keep on filling that up. I don't trust people. Keep on just keep on filling it up with different thoughts and ideas of who you don't trust, what you don't trust. Um, and just keep on filling up on Twitter. Add us. Let us know who you don't trust, what you don't trust. And we will feature it on a future episode. And make sure you subscribe and I told you before, we're doing a bunch of giveaways. Make sure you subscribe and rate and leave a comment on iTunes. Make sure you leave like a, a contact, you know, Twitter name or Instagram name, some way we can get in touch with you. Because if you go to iTunes, rate, subscribe, and leave a comment, we're going to be giving gifts away. I don't know what it is. Because, you know, you could get yourself a new tea. You could get a phone call from me. You could get a pair of lugs. Well, I don't. I wouldn't give them a pair of lugs because that would mean I don't fuck with them. Oh, and I definitely wouldn't fuck with people who subscribe and rate. But listen, Doc, man, um, I appreciate you taking the time to come up here. Thank you for having and, me. And it's an honor. I appreciate all of you and, and all chopping of it up sweet. with us. I knew you was gonna make me cry. I knew it. I didn't make you do anything. You did. You no, did. I knew it. You felt open enough and fragile. It's a and, lump. Oh no, it's a lump. Uh, and I tried to get it to go. <laughs> well, it just goes to show how organic and authentic. Um, you know, these conversations are and need to be had. I feel like um, it's not only about, you know, Miss Lissa uh, um, crying or, or just talking. It's about... It was some, beautiful, too. No, it was. Because it's about somebody else hearing and feeling that they could, you know, uh, be empowered by that. And and I think that's what's important. Because I always want to make content with the mindset of having somebody to leave with something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, know, mm -hmm. you, you know, it's funny because, like, all, all these years of doing things... Um, we would do events, and Dallas has this mindset too. And I think we do this without even knowing that we do this, and we're similar. Uh, is we go to events, or you know, and I've been you know invited or hosted, and I always try to bring something from a brand to give them, or I try to bring something that I have to give people because I want them to walk away with something. Hmm. I don't just want them to be there like I was there, you know, or I met premium peter i met dallas penn I, I want them to gain something when they leave well they do they don't need to gain something material that's the thing you don't need to give them any more than what you give them in your word yeah but i do yeah i guess so i guess right. so. thank you thank you i guess so. I, I love giving people stuff 
<laughs> he said, I got too much shit. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. That is true. That's why I tell people to make sure they rate and subscribe. because Rate I'm, and subscribe. I, I'm cleaning out my garage. Shit, I'm about make to do sure, it. Me too. Make sure we, we also uh, reconnect uh, Dr. Maya Pettiford's Twitter handle. Just for anybody who's listened and may know someone, may have a friend, please um, make sure you connect to the doctor on some real healthy, yes. wholesome um Practical stuff. What Simply is it again? Because the doctor can. It's D R. She's saving lives. M A Y A P E. Double T I F O R D. Listen, David. Give her a shout. Okay, no, no Medicare, no Medicaid though. No, no, no. no but I will care? direct you. Uh, no, people have contacted okay. me not on DMs. Okay. But well, well, you me. have your email on there, I think, maybe, right? Yeah. So they could contact yeah, people. People have want. contacted me, yeah. Listen, you uh, have a great soul. If somebody had a, a question or anything, you would definitely respond. Of course, to I always do. Well, listen, internets, listen. Hazel uh, eyes and nice toes, internets. <laughs> DM. <laughs> DM. And don't forget about sliding up in Miss Listers. You know, make sure for you sure, for sure, for sure. Every, She's sweet. Every week, every week, <laughs> every week, y'all. Every week, <laughs> Somebody, <laughs> somebody's going to hit the jackpot. No, Let me you know tell you that something, somebody slid in just to be so nice. Like I think this nigga being funny. Well, um, like I just want to tell you how great you are. You and are. You have this wonderful person. I'm like nigga, you lying. <gasps> Whoa. Like, no, he's telling the truth, but I feel like he did that because he knows that I am not going to answer. So let me get this heartfelt. But, and I'm oh, like, no. No, no. Doc, doc, no. you know what Miss Lissa needs? She's trick she, me. She, right now, you know what she's doing? She so is, I opened no. it and said thank you because I didn't want to, but I was just like. No, you what you're doing is you're sabotaging. You're Possibilities. Sab- you're sabotaging. You're, sab- you're sabotaging. You, you, you could probably have someone in your life that would be amazing. You're sabotaging. I don't think he's going to come you to need my a DM, night, though. You need a night of, 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 you know what you need? You need a, hi- a night again where that you poured that uh, 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 honey on you, each other, or the, what would you pour on each other? <laughs> the syrup. The syrup. The, 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 the maple syrup. The log cabin joint. Oh, you know? my gosh. And, and that's what you need. You need. Let me, let me tell you something. Internet, it's okay. We, sometimes we need to... To not only sexually, but we need to be mind fucked. You understand? Absolutely. Mm. We need that. And somebody come no, in, a, a, in her DMs and, and shout her out. She's quite lovely. Be respectful. <laughs> exactly. Be respectful. But internet, listen. Um, what you got here is a beautiful tribute, I think, to show how important therapy is. So if you're going through anything, and I always say this, feel free to hit me up also. Anything I could do for you, if you're depressed, if you, if you have any issues, if you're separated dad, a separated mom, any parenting things, like real talk, you know, I, I, I want to make positivity sexy again. You know, <laughs> I, you know I, and that's what I want to do. But anyway, listen, internet is Dr. Maya Pettiford, Dallas Penn. Miss Listen knows. episode. Yep. It's, listen. It's and, and another one. thing, too. Stay tuned. We're going to be having a live show uh, celebrating the anniversary coming up soon. Probably, like, I think in maybe don't, May. Don't do that yet. We ain't got I don't know. But anyway, we'll happening. keep you posted. It'll be in New York City, and then maybe we'll take it on the road. It's but listen, shouts to everybody subscribing all over the world that listens to us. We appreciate you. If you're going through anything, don't ever feel weird. Just call up a friend or a therapist. And we'll see you next episode. Dr. Maya Pettiford. Cheers.